got a green light and I ought to be live so let me just go and make sure that's a good question we don't know <laughs> maybe sometimes okay. wizards are late that's a good question we don't know okay <laughs> yeah you're you're there yeah, we are live this started streaming less than a minute ago yep <clears throat> so we'll just give this a moment for some people to begin filtering in yeah i hope to see uh, bunches one, two, of people three okay well one All of right, them's yeah, me it's, it's getting there <laughs> oh okay well actually one of them might be me since i'm on my home page right now i wonder if it counts me i tell you what i'm gonna i'm gonna change you tell me if the number goes down it's on three right now Mm-hmm. okay did it go down not yet keep an eye on it see if it does just out of curiosity just curious i don't know if it if it actually counts me or not <laughs> did it go down nope still says three okay well there it is let me just pop out the chat and we'll get all up and going here in a minute. Um, I also need to actually edit. Now it says two watching. So I don't know whether somebody left or if it was a, maybe a delay in the update when I left. Lag. Maybe yeah, there was knows. a delay in the update because I left. We don't. By, by the way, I figured out that uh, my headset mic isn't working. Uh -huh. uh, it's all this time been on the laptop mic that I've got, and that is why I I can't. You know, I'm supposed to be able to mute when I put my mic up on my headset, headset and it wasn't doing that. That's because uh, apparently I only have one plug for a headphone. And for some reason, I wound up with a headphone that didn't have the USB object so that I could plug it in that way so everything would work. So the only thing that's working is my earphones, but my mic is not working. So <clears throat> if I'm too loud, I'll sit back in my chair. <laughs> okay. Hey, All Ri right. Richard Madden is in the house. Hello, Richard. Hey, Richard. You know, Richard, in, um, in reference to the question that you asked me, even though I've already responded in comments, um, uh, you know, I really wasn't um, all that familiar with Deborah Travers. I've heard her on a couple of, um, I've heard a couple of her interviews, and it's been a long time since I heard anything from her. I know she was interviewed by a lot of people, including Sergeant Report, SGT Report, who I have absolutely no respect for. Um, I'm with you on that. I also know that she was interviewed by um, John B. Wells, who I have a little bit of respect for. But, um, man, she has some really, really out there wild claims. Just, it's like, it's like fear porn. If you, if you get, at, uh, like an entertainment value out of listening to people who are just scaring the living shit out of you with the, you know, conspiracy stuff that is kind of going around. Um, and, you know, maybe I, I should have probably looked into her a little bit deeper for tonight's discussion, especially since we have Deep Six. And by the way, welcome again, Daniel. How have you been? Thanks, I've been good. I'm sorry to be late. I slept in. No, that's all right. Um, we're mostly blaming on Amy. Yep, it's all my fault. But as usual, Gandalf is... Oh, there he is. His light went green, so he's on 
He's on Skype. He, Gandalf may be popping in here momentarily. Real soon now. Late as always. Speaking speaking of fear porn conspiracy type stuff, or sort of, have you seen what the SH Promise channel put out? I don't know that channel, so no. Well, SH, what does SH stand for? A certain oh, right, yeah. Event? Yeah, we, we won't say those words. We will not. But at any rate, it's yes, like, it's they, like it's it's like when you go to the beach and you get sandy stuff all over you. Yeah, and yeah, then, and then and I, the, you know if you, you got to be careful not to step on those fishing hooks. Right, right. People like yes. people like to go to the sandy beach and, and use fishing hooks when they fish. They do that. <laughs> yes. Okay. At right. any rate, yes, the the sandy beach fishing hook promise channel put out a it's a little over one minute's worth of utter garbage <laughs> where they have all these kids you know saying oh i got this gift and each time one says i've got a a, a gift uh they get more and more fearful like this kid goes oh i got these running shoes they're perfect and as he's running down the hall and suddenly he looks behind him and you can hear bang 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 in the background and it's it gets worse from there. Oh, that's the group that uh, the Sandy Hook shooter. Uh, don't don't say those words. Why? Oh, uh, yeah, we, I can. No, I get it. Sorry. Uh, we 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 might be edited. Voice you know? voice to text algorithms. That's why. Yes. I was sitting here wondering what the hell you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, just you're just me. you're just slow. That's all, dear. <laughs> No, I, no. I, I can I can see why. You know. It sucks that we have to self censor that way, but yeah, we sometimes yes. we sometimes speak in code. Like if you want to talk about a particular group of people, we call them Smurfs. And if you don't know what that is, I can tell you, they it rhymes. We we use the we use Smurfs because they're bluish. Yes. <laughs> yep. At any rate, so yeah, uh, the interesting thing is. Uh, surprise, surprise, they have their thumbs turned off and their comments turned off. <laughs> oh, but but I recommend going over to Photo Via Pop's channel because she put it up. You know, she just copied it and it's I think she entitled it Be Afraid, Be Very Afraid. Are you terrified yet? <laughs> You know, something on that order, and uh, I gave her, I gave her a thumbs up on it, even though the content was was pretty absurd. But the fact that she brought it over and now we can discuss how absurd it is gets her a thumbs up from me. <laughs> so, hey, hey Pam, hi, hi, Pam and James, glad to see you guys. So, you guys know what today is, right? Uh, it is uh, 9.20. Yeah. 20th of it's 21st of the 9th. Um, <laughs> You're just in the wrong part of the world. Well, I don't believe, I don't believe Daniel anyway because Australia does, isn't supposed to exist. That's right. He doesn't exist. Well, when we fell off the bottom of the earth. 225 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you guys can function with all the blood rushing to your head since you all are upside down. Yeah, really. Once, once, we, start, once we started building, it just made the, the country too heavy and it fell off. <laughs> yep. yep. So we're floating in space. So there's a special event happening today. Can does either of you? Oh, the the, the global warming bullshit. No, thing. no, not, not that. that. No, not okay. that. Okay. Something even more. No. Something even more retarded. Oh good heavens! I don't know how much how much more retarded <laughs> one can get. But uh, I'll give you a hint. You, yeah, you might want to put on your Nurutu running shoes for this event. Is it a marathon? Of sorts. 
It's going to be a short marathon. Oh come, my come on, guys. Where, where, where have you been? You have, I, you have heard of the internet, haven't you? Uh, it's, it's vaguely familiar to me. Uh, well, it's catching on, so you might want to <laughs> check it out. I might want to <laughs> check it out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Regina. <laughs> Regina S. She got it right. Oh. Ah, that's right. Oh, yes. I forgot about. <laughs> yeah. I, I just totally wrote that off long ago. It's a bunch of. Pfft. So. Yeah. <coughs> I can't see what she wrote, so you'll have to tell me. Area 51. <clears throat> Oh, the yeah, the storm, yeah. storm area fifty one. Yes. There, I wonder yeah. how many people will turn up. There's already oh. a couple of hundred. Yeah, a couple of hundred people. Oh my gosh! And what are they doing? Partying. Well, that's right. I mean, <laughs> check it out. Um, There's poor I, people there. I knew it was going to be a farce. I had, God dang these notifications. Um. I had it open. Where did it go? Let me see. I had oh, it. Influence. And my Anos. I, I, I know. I, I, I can't pronounce your name. I think that was the problem I had the other night. But hi. And Regina, too. Mm, so I was watching the news last night which is about 18 hours ago now. And I was watching hordes of children shutting down Sydney, Brisbane, and the local towns around me, demanding their enslavement. It was absolutely horrifying. Oh, wow. So, so I expect it, expect it. Is it not Friday evening in America? Yes. Yes. So you should have had it. 20 after 7. Um, I guess RT isn't covering it live anymore. In Influence, Influence gave me a link in the uh, other Hangout group um, where they had live on their... Oh, wait a minute. They are live, but they're not... They were out there uh, live streaming their coverage of the gathering at, at the Area 51 thing. And, yeah, everybody's just, you know... I don't, I, I could see what looked like maybe a hundred people, but if you look further down the road, there was another group of cars, so I'm going to guess, and this was you know, maybe two hours ago, um, that there might have been 200 people-ish, plus or minus. <laughs> Give or take. And but wait, wasn't, weren't there supposed to be millions of people? That was, that was what... Yeah, Some said might happen. <laughs> there was it was up to three million people on the uh, on the Facebook page that was that had clicked the uh, you know yes I will attend kind of uh, just a stupid you know click this and show your support and say it, it, it's it, it was supposed to be people that planned on going and it was up to three million and of course most of those clicks a lot of them I'm betting came from halfway around the world so how many of those people are genuine and going to show up. Yeah, really. How many people are going to get on an airplane and fly halfway across the United States to show up for something that they genuinely don't think is even going to happen? And I said to Influence in the Hangouts when she dropped that RT link, I said um, something like, based on what I see, I, I, I said, I get, I'm guessing that probably more than half of the people that are there already are not there to actually take part in whatever the plan was, but they're there to just sort of watch to see what's going to happen. And I don't think anybody who is even there, even if they actually had any real intention of that, it, that it was actually going to be a real thing, I don't think they even, you know, planned on following through. Well, which hippie is going to be the first hippie to face the machine guns? Right. Yeah, really. You know, which what which is going to be the sacrificial lamb? <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll shoot one of them and everyone else will run away. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone there knows that. So who's going to be the first one? Yeah, I, I just think the whole idea was a dumb idea to begin with, like from the word from the onset. 
I mean, it's not as if they have, uh, you know, live or dead aliens just in an unlocked building above ground. And even if they did have aliens, which I don't think that they do. Okay. At least not anymore. I don't think that they do. They're sure as hell not going to be in some unguarded, unlocked building above ground that you guys could just run in there and kick the door in. And, and it, it was just a completely dumb idea. Everything about well, it is a dumb idea. I mean, the guy who started it is saying now, I don't know how true it was when he first initiated the idea, but, you know, he said it was a joke. And, yeah, it was a joke, whether he meant it as one initially or not. Oh, geez. So a lot of people, a lot of people think there are aliens there. Well, I think that there were alien craft based on what I encountered in my life, but I don't think they're there now. I think somebody said something about S S four. I yeah. think that, is yeah, where that, things that, trooped that, off to. That's Bob Lazar. Bob Lazar has been completely and utterly destroyed and debunked. Everything that that guy has to say is almost. Almost every single thing out of that guy's mouth has been debunked. I haven't seen it, but maybe I've just missed it. Uh, well, if you're if in, you watch long enough, if you just listen to him long enough, he debunks himself. Uh huh. Stanton so Friedman. Corey... Stanton Friedman completely, completely destroyed Bob Lazar, like utterly. He fact-checked all of the uh, schools that he supposedly yeah. went to. And the professors that supposedly went to did those he, schools. Did he, did he debunk the, uh, the, uh, I think uh, it Element was, 115? No. Did he, did he, did, they, they went, one guy went to talk to, I, I try, I'm trying to remember which lab it was he said he worked at, <clears throat> where they were saying, nope, never have had any sign of him. And he was taken to an office and the guy he was going to talk to, they said, wait here. He'll be in in a moment, and he found uh, an internal phone book, and there was Bob Lazar's name in the phone book. So now uh, somebody's not telling the truth, and I ponder who it is. I'm going to have to I – th I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut – I am going to – crap i can't shut that down because even, even if i turn off notifications i think it'll just turn off the sound so 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 hang on just a second let me turn off these options if i no see they're on um actually they were off yeah uh evan i don't know about 115 I, I can't answer that. It is conceivable that there is a stable isotope, but no clues. It's another tangent. Yeah, well, he asked about in the chat about 115. And <coughs> this is a the, the whole thing is a tangent. Relative to what? Um, to distracting us from becoming politically active and taking control of our destinies. Oh, the, the Area 51 business? All of it. The whole disclosure thing is. Yes. Well, yeah, I, I'm, you, I guess we all know that the uh, military came out and said something to the effect of, well, yes, UFOs are real. No, they didn't. But that, yeah. Well, I, no, I, they they yeah. said... To the effect of. But if, if you pay attention to how they worded that. No, they, I know. I know. I'm just saying they're saying that whatever they are observing are real phenomena. But there's, the there's, news is reporting it as they said UFOs are real. I, I, I saw that throwing, on a headline. I'm, they, I mean, they're just throwing fuel on a fire that's fizzling. And it worked. Yeah, probably. It worked. People were losing interest. They were realizing disclosures been happening 
next month for the last 20 years. Yes, that's true. And, and they'd be getting sick of it. And so they thought, well, you know, we need people to keep talking about this. We need yes. them to keep we need wasting another... their time on this. So like, let's feed like, them. Let's, like... let's... Wasting their time on the shape of the planet, wasting their time on, you know, yes. filling the blank. <laughs> it's like, yeah, the earth could be flat. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, the guy, I think it, the what does it matter? Yeah, exactly. We've got a problem of psychopaths in control on our planet, irrespective of what shape things are or whether there are, you know, ETs running around. We the, need the, a the solution. <laughs> Well, actually, and it certainly appears to be a sphere, and I think we want want to show that today. <clears throat> okay. Well, I, let, let's, let me say back up. The, mod the model that that would explain what I see is indeed spherical. Let me back up a little bit. Yes. The Area Fifty One thing that's going on today, when the military came out or the news came out and the military people said, yes, those UFO videos are real. That was just a couple of days ago. Yes. Okay. I think that's part of the Area 51 PSYOP. Yes. Because it, it as like Daniel said, the whole thing is kind of fizzling and it's, it's a way of renewing people's interest in the topic. And the timing of all that that came out just a few days before the Area 51 thing, to me, is pretty suspicious. Let's also remember, or keep in mind if you don't know, the military man who was in charge of releasing that statement. Um, I forget his name, I forget his rank, but what I remember specifically is that he is the spokesperson for the Department of, I think the Navy, who's in charge of information warfare. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. So when the <laughs> Navy comes out and says, yes, those UFO videos are real, that's coming from a department that is primarily set up to, to do information warfare. And yeah, you see, I was watching Edge of Wonder last night, and those guys were saying, well, the Pentagon says this, and we know that they lie, and, but, but the Navy, well, we trust them because they're part of the good guys. And I'm like, I'm hitting my head thinking, are you guys for real? Because I'm breaking my head whether or not these guys are astroturf. They just seem to be too well produced. But I think they are because to say that is like the Pentagon not being in control of the Navy is like, it is, it is an absurdity. Yes. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> well, let's also keep in mind that the government and the media, who are the two entities responsible for releasing that information, are habitually known liars. Or yeah. I should yeah. say they are known habitual liars. So, in other words, we can trust nothing they say. That's correct. Yes, about as far as we can throw it, if that. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. I totally agree. But the, the whole movement was losing steam. I was reading the comments on, on the videos. Corey Good, you've heard of him? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And who, and who was the guy who brought him out, the blonde guy? I forgot uh, his name. David uh, Wilcock. David Wilcock. David yes. Wilcock. Now, David Wil Wilcock, he's charismatic. He's a smooth talker. Yeah. He can get you interested. He can suck you right in. And yeah. then he dumps Corey Good in your lap because what he's saying is losing steam. Then he turns up on Edge of Wonder, and I'm like, okay, why are they doing that? But I go through and read the comments of the latest videos, and everyone has had enough. They're like, this is becoming too absurd. You're uh, grasping at straws. You're just feeding us too much crap. So the government comes to the rescue and yeah. gives these you would these astroturf, gives yeah. them a little bit more uh -huh. to nibble on, and then it just keeps the whole ball rolling and everyone sort of pays attention again. Uh-huh. Yeah. Looks away from the, you know, the, what the right hand is doing. <laughs> yep. It's also is, a sizable industry. Go ahead, finish. Yeah, well, they're enslaving us, aren't they? Oh, well, they've yes, got, they are. They yeah. got, literally every child in this country was on the street 
yesterday demanding that industry be shut down and that they be enslaved. Yeah. They're, they're terrifying the children. And when these kids grow up, only a small percentage of them are going to wake up to that fact. So we're not very far away from, you yeah. know, yeah. Green Party winning the election <sighs> and have, us having a prime minister who is basically a, a communist. So to address your point a, mem a moment ago, before I backed up to talk about the uh, war, the uh, information war department, um, you made a comment, and somebody in the in the side chat also made a, a comment about the importance of the shape of the Earth, or whether or not it's it's an even important thing to to consider because of all the problems that we have on Earth to deal with, and how is it how is it even important what the shape of the Earth is? Well, to be quite honest with you. It's actually very, very, very damn important because if it does turn out to be flat, which it's not, I will stake my life on it that it's not. Me too. But hypothetically, just just for conversation, if it were flat, what does that actually mean for humanity? In most cases, it's going to mean God. Under almost every circumstance you can think of, it means God is real. God made this place for us. And we yep. are, we're an isolated island. The entire universe revolves around us. Or there's a dome, a crystal dome, like it says in the Bible. And it's all projection and holograms to make the stars move, which is dumb all by itself, because I would like to know if we have a dome, how the hell do meteors get here? Um, that's, a, that's a pretty pathetic god. Well, he, yeah, it, it, it is. I, mean, <laughs> if I don't need that. I don't need... The earth to be flat to believe that God made the universe or, or a creator no, made the universe. No, I mean, everything exactly. is so magnificent. Exactly. It's just a grand view of God. And that's the way the church looked at it when when they were told that the earth wasn't flat. It just it gave them a grander view of the universe. And the same thing happened with Newton. It gave them a grander view of, of reality. And then they even when Darwin came out with evolution, most of the church said, well, this is just God's work anyway. So it was only the fundamentalists that really took exception to it. Yes, the, the literalists and uh -huh. all of that. Yeah. And they're in the minority. Gan yeah. Gandalf, what's up, bro? Is that Gandalf? <laughs> yes, it's in one of his other channels. Hello. Hey, Gandalf. How are you? <laughs> yeah sorry you guys uh roof this is why we're, i'm gonna need to get your cell phone oh, man I, i've just been at a mechanic shop for the last like two hours so sorry for the belated arrival yeah no worries no what worries. is what is with that picture you've got <laughs> this picture looks military this picture is the key to everything he's it's a 42 He's a he's a, a men in black from the 16th century. No, this is a game called Deus Ex that came out for the PlayStation 2. Um, a lot of the motifs and a lot of the things that you've been hearing about in the alternative media for the last 20 years are all directly related into this video game. This game predicted everything that's happened to this world. Um, including the World Trade Centers going down in 2000. Wow. Really? I thought it was pronounced <clears throat> Duzix because Du is God spelled. So, you, so you're aware of Deus Ex? Yes. I, I see. I never played it. I didn't know the content or the <laughs> premise or any of that. But yeah, I did some graphic design work for uh, a gamer uh, online gamer thing, and every time a new game would come out, they'd want to do a like a review or something. So they needed somebody willing to volunteer their time, and they'd say, you know, do some graphic for this, do some graphic for that, and that was one of the games that I did. Uh, a graphic for and that's about all i know about it 
Wow, I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's a coincidence, Amy. Yeah. Amaratsu, that's no coincidence. This is part of this is part of the webs of time tying into each other right here. Okay, if you say so. Oh, I know. So does does Fox produce the game? I'm not sure if Fox produces it. Um, what's really strange about the game is. You know, the first level, you got to remember this came out in 2000. So the first level of the game, you're in New York City. So you're on that island where the Statue of Liberty is. And you look out to the scenery of New York City and you'll notice a lot of the buildings that you're familiar with are there. But the two buildings that are not there are the World Trade Centers. <laughs> ah. Maybe they plan to release that game a year later. Well, the games all, the game takes place uh, 20 years or 30 years in the future, and it takes place in a world where robotics uh, are taking over, where large corporations are manipulating uh, the politicians. Everyone's uh, subservient to these large super corporations who actually control things behind the scenes. Uh, and they knew the towers wouldn't be there. They somehow knew that the World Trade Centers wouldn't be there in the future. Is the one world trade center there? No, it, it, there's just no, there. There might be an early rendition of it, but uh, there's no world trade centers. It's just another building that's there. Hmm. Interesting. So there's, so there's one building. Yeah, there. I, I'm pretty sure it's just one building that's there. You know, there was a lot of stuff that was added in into video games, you guys, back in the late 90s, early uh, zeros. You know, I'm sure you guys are familiar with a game called uh, Perfect Dark. Uh, actually, no. Well, Perfect Dark was made by the team that made uh, GoldenEye 007. I'm sure you guys remember that for the N64. Um, no, but... Okay. Well, well, there's got to be people listening here in the chat. I guarantee anyone under uh, and under under 40, under 35 knows what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm I, over 40. I, I played uh, Mass Effect. I played Fable. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I've, I've heard of Sonic the Hedgehog. Halo. I played Halo. Halo. Yes, I played Halo. We'll get a load of this story, you guys. Um, this is one thing that I've always found strange about the entire conspiracy theory genre. To, to try and get off a video game subject, just but still relating into this uh, conspiracy movement at large. You know, when I was a little kid, this game came out. I think, uh, let me just check the exact date. Um, but you guys will find this really, really strange. Um, And a lot of things very strange. Okay, let's find out exactly when this came out. May 22nd, 2000. A game came out called Perfect Dark. Now, in the game Perfect Dark, you're, you're an agent that works for a type of corporation, kind of like a contracting corporation, similar to uh, Blackwater, but you deal in much more black ops type operations. The first bit of the game is you trying to investigate and get to the bottom of what this corporation called Datadyne is up to. They're developing highly advanced cybernetic and artificial intelligence programs, and they're contracted in with the United States government. But there's a sector of the government that's actually trying to get control of the technology and they're basically uh they get to the point where they figure to get a hold of this technology that's being developed by this corporation they're gonna have to take out the president so you end up going to rescue the president and what you notice about the president is he's half white half black now this takes place in 2015, I believe it takes place, but roughly the same time uh, that runs alongside the Obama presidency. Mm -hmm. so we're dealing with a half black, half white president. What's also strange about this is the, uh, 
the adding into so it basically it's kind of sci-fi elements right so you're dealing with um at one point you have to uh infiltrate to get onto back to the subject what you guys were talking about uh because i was listening on my phone was area 51 but you don't investigate and go into area 51 because you find out that all the alien bodies have all been removed and all the technology has been taken out of area 51 and it's been moved to Utah to area 52. So <laughs> you have to get into area 52 and you need to rescue a gray alien. So you rescue the gray alien and he becomes like your little buddy uh, that you meet here and there in the game. But the entire time, these different people that are you think are government um, insiders trying to overthrow the government, it turns out that they're actually reptilians with hologram cloaks that uh, can shapeshift into the appearance of a human being. <laughs> David yeah, so they had one? Read, <laughs> yeah. They had so, read that at all. Yeah. So is this not all starting to sound kind of? spookily uh similar to the entire uh conspiracy alternative media well shifting reptilians co corporations that secretly run the government and they have top secret <laughs> artificial intelligence uh programs well the government is a corporation i mean all governments are corporations that's true that's true so <laughs> And all your cities are corporations? Yes. Unless they say unincorporated, they are corporations. There are, I learned there are a few cities and even a county or two here in the United States that specifically disincorporated their cities and counties. And they are now no longer corporations. They are run by the people. Well, I just... I just Concept. Yeah, I just wonder how uh, fake, uh, like, I just wonder how deep the entire manufacturing of our entire idea of what's really going on in the world. I, I, I think that a large percent of, you know, conspiracy culture is manufactured. I think. Uh, oh, I agree with you there. You know, um, I, I shared that picture the other day. I'm not sure if you saw it at Emiratsu, but I know Roof did. The picture of uh, George Lucas. Mm, doesn't sound familiar. And he's with uh, Mr. Eichner, who was at that point the CEO and president of the Disney Corporation. <laughs> and he's also with, on his other side, uh, Jordan Maxwell, if anyone's familiar with that. Oh, yeah. So it was Mr. Eichner, uh, George Lucas, and Jordan Maxwell all together. When was the picture taken? This must have been in the mid '90s. This would have been okay. maybe 1994, 1995. Now, this is what's strange about it. Um, this oh, was. I I think I see it here on Skype. Uh, yes, I see Jordan Jordan Maxwell, and then. Yeah. Okay, I seen can it. You forward that to me, can you please, Amy? Um, I'm not sure how I can do that. But I'll see if I can figure it out. I'll download it and upload it. Thank you. Well, maybe if Roof's here, he can just uh, go to uh, his uh, Google search and just search it in. I think no, that I, this, I, I think that sorry, this uh, I think this picture is key to what's going on. It does sound like key. Um, I can't I, really use the internet. I, it'll just ruin this. I tried to last week and it didn't work. My computer isn't powerful enough, but I can use Skype. Yeah, something strange. Something strange, okay, about this picture because I have never heard anyone speak about this picture before, ever. I've never heard a single person, person that I followed for... I, I've been looking into conspiracy related stuff for uh 10 years now more than 10 years and the way i found this picture was you guys are gonna are gonna think this was super fucking nerdy but um it was a video called uh the phantom menace 20 years later 
and it was basically a guy going over um, Star Wars The Phantom Menace and saying, is it really as bad as we all remember it, considering how shit these new Disney Star Wars movies are? <laughs> and so with this guy's uh, giving you the lowdown on exactly how The Phantom Menace came together, the different actors, blah, 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 how it all happened, why George Lucas eventually sold uh, sold to Disney in the end. And as I'm watching this nerdy, total, like I admit, it's a, I, I, I was interested because I love the early Star Wars movies. And this picture comes up and I'm like, I, I felt like I was like losing it. I was like, am I fucking crazy? Or is that Jordan Maxwell standing beside George Lucas and uh, Mr. Eichner of Disney? And it is Jordan yeah, Maxwell. Uh, you hadn't seen that? ID cards around their necks, but Lucas doesn't. Yeah, yeah, well, they were visitors. The, the CEO of Disney and Jordan Max will both have on the same uh, little name tag there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So where is this? Is this at Lucas Studio? That looks like Disney World. So the conspiracy movement is Disney World. <laughs> it's a psychological operation the entire conspiracy movement at large is all controlled at different levels by different um, assets and different disinfo artists. And here we are, people looking for truth and the people that you're getting filtered through looking for this truth are all playing different parts of a massive uh, psychological warfare operation to fuck with your head. So you got certain people that are telling you that they're shape-shifting reptile cloak humans uh, telling you to analyze uh, the eye movements of celebrities. You got people telling you that, you know, the, the grays are really this and that. They're, they're feeding you different elements of this massive clusterfuck of information, but it's, it's, a, it's a plot. It's a storyline. It's a, it's a George Lucas script. You know, I've mentioned this before, and you might remember Gandalf and Amy, mm. <clears throat> that conspiracy theorists are not new. It's The internet did not create conspiracy theorists, people who generally just don't go along with the narrative with the government and the media put out. They, they, that they're always in society, going back since time immemorial, there's, yes. there's always somebody in every group who will listen to the dictates of the leader who says, we got to do this because of this, we got to do this because of that, and we need to make these new rules because this and that. And there's always somebody who's going to say, that's bullshit. Right? There's always somebody who is going to not agree or, or not believe the official story, whatever it is, no matter who it comes from. And... The idea of conspiracy theorists is not at all new. So, as we all know, staying ahead of your enemy, in this case, the public is the enemy and the government is the adversary. So, knowing full well that the internet was coming, since they're the ones who gave it to us, let's not forget. Yes, yes. Knowing full well what it was going to do to society, the free flow of information, mm -hmm. they were out in front of this conspiracy movement. <clears throat> and so it now... It was a big shot in the arm for it, wasn't it? Actually, it was. It was a big shot in the arm for the, the psychological operation known as the truth movement. They knew full yes, well. They knew full well what was going to happen. Real information was going to start flowing around. And what their job is, is to muddy the water as much as possible. Yes, so, yes. the mud flood. So... Mud flood. The, yeah. mu the mud flood is exactly right, and that's a nice little segue because tonight I intend to take a huge dump on the mud flood and Max Egan and a YouTube channel known as the Observation Deck. Ah, yes. I introduced yeah, you to I that have, one. <laughs> Amy, speaking of which, could you... Um, I thought I had a tab open with that video, and I lost that tab. Can you grab that link and, and give it to me again so I don't have to... 
Um, okay, let me see if I can find it here. Good grief. But just right. to add, I think Max Egan actually believes that there was a mud flood. I don't think he's actually disseminating information that he knows to be false. What, hmm. makes, what makes you say that? Because I know Max. Personally? I, just, I know, yeah, I know his intellect level. And I also know he's, he is one of those people you were just talking about. He's always going to head towards a conspiracy. And if he sees enough information that confirms his bias, he will run with it. And he, if you go back over his videos, he does actually say for a lot of things that he has purported that he no longer believes in. And he'll probably get to that stage with the mud flood because so many of those photos that prove there was a mud flood are, actually don't. And one of the good points to make is that the photography at the time, the lens had to be open for, you know, a couple of minutes to take a picture. And then there's nobody <laughs> in the street because everyone's moving. And so no one's standing still for two minutes. Right. And then, then, but then they'll come and say, oh, but they invented the technology for this at this date. And this photo was taken two years after. And you just have to think for a second that back then, two years after invention of, you know, instant photography, not everyone's going to have an instant camera. So they were still using cameras right up until the early 1900s. But that took a couple of minutes to expose or at the very least, you know, 15 seconds. So a lot of the pictures that show nobody in a city mm -hmm. are actually fake. Everyone's moving around. And it just, yeah. you just got to put a little bit of thought into, put a little bit of thought into it, you know, like they didn't have the, what right. we've got today, where an iPhone comes out and everyone's got it within a month. Every, every idiot's got that iPhone within a month. They line up to get them. This was yeah. not the case back in the 1800s. It would I, take decades. I just really quick, Ruth, I dr dropped the link in the chat. In the live chat or the side, the hangout side, chat? The, the side, the live chat. Oh. So that if other uh, people okay. want to take a look as well, they can do so. Okay. Another thing too with Max is that he travels all over the world to give, to give talks. And the people who host the talks pay for his travel. So he has to come up with new stuff. All right. So he's actually actively looking for new conspiracies that he can dive into and talk about, get people interested in and go to his talks. If yeah. he doesn't do that, he, he loses Patreon. He doesn't work. He doesn't claim benefits as far as I know. I don't believe he does. And then, so he needs to keep this income stream rolling. Right. And he, like, he likes to travel. And to, in order to do that, he needs to see what people are interested in and he needs to dive into it. And I don't believe he's doing that on purpose. Maybe a little bit of him knows what he's doing is, is irresponsible, but he doesn't care. And the, his core message has always been the same. And it's that all our, all our governments are basically working together to enslave us all. And that's the truth. Yeah, that's definitely the truth. But that that message hasn't changed. You know, when you when when you mentioned Sorry. when you mentioned that he travels around and he, he has to get people to show up at his talks, and, yeah. and and it's not just his talks. I don't know if Max Egan gives specific um, uh, lectures where it's he's the only speaker. I think he's usually a keynote speaker in some other larger group. Yes. And so a minute ago when we were talking about the the alien conspiracy. I mentioned that's actually big business because when you have these conventions, these disclosure conventions where many hundreds, in some cases thousands of people will show up to a huge convention center to, yep. to listen to people like Stephen Greer and David Icke speak and David Wilcock, Corey Good, to listen to these keynote speakers get up on stage and tell their stories. A lot of those people travel, some cases, long distances to be there. So you've got airline travel. You've got hotels, rental cars, uh, uh, food. You know, when you're on the road and you're traveling, you're usually at restaurants. Um, the ticket the, costs hundreds of dollars. The ticket costs, the convention center, the speakers, um, 
the the boost to the local economy when the convention center is active and full of participants, no matter what the convention is about, that's a boon to the city or the, or the local area of that convention center. Hotels, rental cars, airline tickets, bus tickets. Some people drive themselves, and so you've got fuel. All right. So all in all, that's that's literally that's huge commerce. There's a lot of money involved with all. So all they need. Uh -huh. They need a new story. They they need to come up with new information every time they speak, or people will stop coming. That's right. They'll stop flying. They'll stop. People, people from Australia will travel to the United States to visit these these conventions, but they won't go if everyone says the same thing that they said last time. Right. Yes, very true. That's right, and that's that's. And people stop watching the videos. So that's that's a lot of money for a lot of. Uh, en entities, airline tickets, sure. rental cars, all the stuff I mentioned. That's all, all the, we have an industry. All the more reason it's to a, get rid of money. It's a pretty huge industry. So yeah, they got to keep that thing alive. Not just, sure. not just for the distraction. Not just for the speakers. Although every, all, the speakers have an interest, the convention centers they don't care who books as long as somebody fills the seats. As long as somebody pays, they're happy. So there's, yeah, but then, there's then tons get, of commerce. David Ike, while while I was in Europe, he was coming to Australia to do talks, and he was <laughs> he, he had sold out auditoriums all, all across the country. Every major city had sold out, and he was going to come and do a big talk. And at the last minute, he was waiting in. He was flying from from Heathrow to Los Angeles, and then he was flying down to Australia. And he got a call to say that his visa had been cancelled because I heard about he's that. such an anti-Semite. So the money wasn't enough to, to allow him into the country to spread his ideas, which is yes. one of the reasons why I kind of like David Icke. I don't like a lot of what he says, and yeah. sometimes he annoys me. with. But I think he's sort of in the same class as Max. I think he's created an industry and a he's basically created an entire career out of, you know, telling everyone what's going on. And he needs to come up with new and more relevant information all the time. And in, in, the, search and, in the search for that and the development of it, they do have, the, everyone has a confirmation bias. E everyone does. And he will, he will, you know, speak to things that he knows nothing about. Mm. As does Mac, and and that's and it's not because they're bad people. I don't believe. I, I I can't really speak to Ike, but I know Max. He does this, and and he truly does believe in almost everything he says, but he doesn't really nut it out. He just runs with it, and he'll refer you to other people's videos, sort of um, similar to the the observation deck, I suppose, and. So you need to check out this, and then he'll say that um, the flat Earth British has come up with great information. But that guy is talking out his asshole. Flat Earth and British is a freaking nutter. I, I is, haven't run across this one. I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> well, no, he he seems like a nice guy, and he really does have a genuine interest. It appears in in investigating you know our history, but he. He needs to have new shocking information all the time to keep it, people coming and watching him live and keep his subscribers growing and, and people donating to his Patreon and everything else. And, and he, he just says stuff that's absolutely absurd and is unverifiable. And these people don't, they don't know the mainstream version of history. They just say the mainstream version of history is a lie and this is true, but they don't actually um, compare in any way. And you can see that they, they haven't studied history as it's been presented to us. And that's something I've done. I've looked very closely at history. I know um, what, you know, what, what's basically been taught. A lot of it's been left out. A lot of uh, important information has been pushed aside. But the timeline is not we're not out. We're not out by a thousand years. The development of Latin has has taken over the last fourteen hundred years. 
is consistent with the changes in Latin and the addition to the words. And that's just one point, but all of that history that they say is missing, that thousand years that has been added to our history is not true. And they'll bring out books in German that say such and such was born in seven, 700 and something. And then they'll go to Wikipedia and it will say was born in 1700 and something. And I can see in that book that it's actually saying the year 700 and something of the second millennia, mm -hmm. but they can't read German. They don't even attempt to, to, to um, translate the words around what they're reading. They're just showing you the 700 and something as the birth date out of this old book that was written in, in the 18th or 19th, early 19th century that is written that way. And, but any, anyone who understands German in any way can then look at that closely and see they're saying the year 700 and 50 of the second millennium. And that was a, it was, that was like a, um, it was just a trend. It was just the way they did it then to, <laughs> I don't know what this is. It, uh, it became a trendy way of writing dates in, in high German for a short period of time. And that for them is confirmation that a thousand years has been added to our history. Hmm. You know, I was gonna, so, I was gonna comment on the the pictures, and and we'll get to that because I'm gonna go through this video. Um, sometimes they'll show you pictures where the streets are empty, and you made a fantastic point, by the way. It's something I hadn't even considered the 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 long exposure time of camera technology in the 1800s. So yeah, I that, hadn't thought of that. that that's a really that. fantastic point to make right there. So <laughs> even if there were people on the street. They wouldn't show up unless they stood still for about a minute and a half. No, but you do actually see streaks and blurs in these photos. Yeah. Well, you know, well, you yeah, we're, we're going to we're, we're go through Let's some of these. We're going to go through some of these photos because they're in this video. It's um, a deep fake. <laughs> but um, what I wanted to mention was also keep in mind that when photographers take pictures of um, <clears throat> iconic landmarks, uh, and and city uh, city streets or whatever with you know iconic buildings and they want to get a good picture, they're going to choose a time of day and they're going to choose absolutely a and they're going to choose a particular day when there are the fewest, if any, people on the street, like early in the morning before people are out and about, or like um, say ten o'clock on Sunday morning where most people are in church and the streets are very. That's quiet. what I was going to say. Yes. Well, have you guys ever seen that? Um... That famous picture, it's like uh, one of the most famous pictures from the U.S. Civil War where you got Robert E. Lee and he's standing there with his Civil War uh, officer's dress uniform on and he's just standing there with his, hand, with his hat in his hand. If you notice but right behind his leg, there's actually a pedestal and that's actually to hold him still in place. Yeah, and they had short... <clears throat> By that time, they actually had short exposure photography, but that photographer didn't have that camera. He was 30 years out of date. They could have taken that picture in 15 seconds, but those cameras that, that didn't become a big, that people didn't have them until the, er, the early 20th century. And it was the box brownie was the first one. And you could take a picture and you could do it in a couple of seconds. But that technology had been around for a hundred years before people actually were able to afford to buy a little compact camera that could take a picture in that time. Everyone else who was doing photography but were doing the long exposure right up until that point. Yeah, I think so that you, the first pictures date back to what, like the 1830s? Uh, well, they're convinced that there was a reset in the 18, about 1850. And then what proves it to them is all of the orphans that were shipped around the world. And there are, there, there are so many explanations for why that happened right. that are ignored. Right. That, like wars. But they're not on purpose because it, it, ignoring that it enables them to, to, to run with the theory that they have that there was a massive wipeout and they believe that the, the Tartarian civilization was wiped out. All of the adults were killed and the children were taken and brought to 
Australia, New Zealand, United States, Canada. Right. And and that that is not what happened. There was no Tartarian Empire that of the way they say. There, there was and there was a Tartarian people, but they were they were not this amazing civilization. They were um, slave traders. Well, weren't and, the Tatars just a nomadic people on the Russian yeah. step after the fall of the? Um, I think were like a, a tribe related to the Golden Horde uh, or the Mongols yes. or something? Yes, yes, they were. And they were in the way of Russia getting to the... Them and the Ottomans were in the way of Russia getting to the Black Sea because um, Peter the Great, he wanted a fleet and Archangel was frozen for most of the year, so he either wanted to get a, a, um, a port in the Baltic but really, he wanted to get to the to the Black Sea because then he could get into the Mediterranean. Yeah, and, and, Catherine, and Catherine the Great eventually uh, secured a, a, a Black Sea port for the Russian Empire. Yeah, she did. Yeah. <clears throat> but the Tatars were in the way. All right. These I, I want to I wanna come back to the mud flood in a moment. All right. I'm, I'm going to have to pull the reins in a second. Let, let's... Let's do this first. Let's just spend a couple of minutes and take a dump on the Mandela effect, and then we'll come back and we'll, and we'll address. Because I want to go through this video, and the in the first for the first ten or fifteen minutes of this video that I'm showing on my screen right now um, is about the Mandela effect. Okay, so well, I don't know. You have to play sound like un unmute your microphone so I can hear it because I'm not able to watch the video. No, the, the live stream. The sound is irrelevant. You can at least see my screen, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And I, hopefully you're at least familiar with the Mandela effect. This. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brace yourself, Amy. <laughs> yeah. Brace yourself, Amy. Cause I'm, and you know what, before I start, Amy, why don't you just tell me why you, you hold stock in the Mandela effect, right? Well, I'll just say this much. There are things that were very well reinforced in my life that are now different from what they kept being up to a point. Give me an example. So, <clears throat> well, the uh, Statue of Liberty. That was your good one, that you walked up the steps to the, to yes, the lamp. Yes. My, dad, my mom, my dad, and I climbed up to the crown, and then my mom didn't want to go in and she my dad and I proceed she stayed there he and I proceeded to climb up the ladder to the torch and we went up to the torch and looked around and came back down and I have very clear memories of that but there are other things like wait wait, when, wait 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 how how does that relate to Mandela well there's well, apparently they there. closed it yeah, it's been closed it since before I was born. So uh, I'm not sure how to put that what? together. You mean the torch lookout was closed? Yes. It, they, they're they saying that it has been closed from... Who's, who's saying? Uh, Port Authority or, you know, a lot of official places. They're all saying it's and, been... And how closed. can they... How can Port Authority of New York. And New but Canada. how can they prove that it was closed on the day you went up? That's true. I it, can't is, answer that. Isn't it Paul? Well, since there were yeah, steps. Yeah, I, I, I'll agree that it is conceivable. And actually, it was a ladder. But uh, I will uh, agree with you that it is possible that somebody got something wrong and is just saying that, but it was open for a while. Yeah, I was going to say. I'll give, is, I'll give you that. So what's your but there are things like is that more possible? I remember very clearly being about five years old, sitting with a box of cereal in front of me and sounding out the name of the cereal. And I went fruit and i knew it was fruit loops and i looked up at my mom and said why is why is fruit spelled f r u i t and she said i don't know why it's spelled that way there are a lot of words in english that are spelt weird but that's that's how you spell fruit and you'd better learn it it's a print word 
Huh? That's why it's a French word. <laughs> well, the point is the and point is the French word. The point is, well, yeah, what whatever the answer is. The point is that now apparently it's always been F R O O T. And the reason that memory stood out in my head was for was that from that point on, every time I encountered an English word that had a weird spelling, I would remember okay. my mom telling me that's how you spell fruit. Okay, I'm I don't I'm not I'm not denying your testimony here. But but let's let's not forget the possibility in this particular instance um, mm -hmm. that brands do change their they the brand brands do change on occasion. I, I, I agree with you on that too, but the manufacturer is saying no, it's always been the F R O O T. The manufacturer is saying this? Yes. Um okay, I would citation needed. Um, well, I, I'll, I'll see if I can round that up. Um, I, I would I would be delighted if you could, especially if you're able to do it while we're on this stream. That would be fantastic. Um, okay. Um, no no the pressure. The competitive brand may have also done the same. <clears throat> no pressure, no pressure. But there, there, there were several other examples that I had. Okay. But we'll leave it at that for so now. So let's let's assume for a moment that your memory is spot on and that it was F R U I T for Fruit Loops. Mm -hmm. and, and here in this video, I think there's an image of the, that Ford, and then here it is, Fruit Loops. Okay. <clears throat> so, it's quite possible. I will grant that it is absolutely quite possible that your memory is spot on. It's also possible that the brand changed. Okay, that's also just the, just the packaging. Yeah, exactly. It's also quite possible that literally just the packaging or of the brand changed. <clears throat> that's that is very possible. Um, but here's here's the killer, Amy. Here's the mm -hmm. here's the sixty four million dollar question. This idea of the Mandela effect, where somehow our past was changed, somebody went back in time. And did something. Oh. I I can't answer to how how it happened. I'm just saying, okay, I'm here on Kellogg's Fruit Loops introduced. It says the cereal pieces come in. Uh, uh, Kellogg's introduced Fruit Loops F R O O T in 1945. Okay. They. They and nowhere do they mention F R U I T loops on this whole site. Okay. They didn't say it used to be, it was introduced as fruit loops <laughs> with fruit spelled the way it's spelled fruit. <clears throat> Nothing. Okay, so according to the people who are promoting this Mandela effect, mm -hmm. they're suggesting. If I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, that somehow our past was changed, right? So in order for that to happen, somebody had to travel through time, go back in time, and, and do something that created the, um, the paradox, right? And then they rippled through time, and all these odd changes happened, right? Well, I, I agree that that's one theory that's floating out there. I don't know if that's correct. I don't know why. But I can say for sure that, that memory was very well reinforced. Because as I grew up, there were a lot of weird spelled English words that I ran into. Well, so. does anybody, Gandalf, uh, Daniel, do you guys have any idea? Let me check the side chat. Is there any other... What's the other explanation? Is there any other uh, explanation? And, uh, another dimension bleeding through into ours. Yeah, that would be my that would be my exact position. Another dimension bleeding into ours. Yeah, well, there's infinite parallel realities. Or so they say. 
No, yeah. well, there are infinite realities. How, how do you know? Because I know. <laughs> I want to get into how I know, but I do know. Okay. CERN, um, Cult Bear says CERN is changing the timeline. Somebody, Lanny said CERN. Well, it's possible it could be CERN related. You got to keep in mind that the entire purpose of uh, the hydrogen collider is to veer and peer into parallel realities. That's the official reason for that entire thing existing, is to hopefully be able to gain some type of knowledge by, you know, accelerating these particles at a uh, near the speed of light, bashing them into each other and creating uh, gateways to alternate realities. Um, so, you know, it, we could be uh, dealing with certain people having memories of parallel universes. You know, th if there's infinite realities, I'm sure that there's hundreds of billions of realities where, you know, the... Fruit Loops is F R O O O T or whatever it is, you know what I mean. And other people are just remembering uh, existence from a parallel, from another dimension where it's just Fruit Loops. Okay, here's my big. Here's the sixty-four million dollar question. Are you ready? Mm. So, despite the ideas and theories as to how the change occurred, ignoring the fact that, and and I I trust you, Amy. I'm not I'm not disqualifying your testimony and your memory That's but, all right. but ignoring for a moment that human memory is pretty faulty the 64 million dollar question for me is this whether it's parallel universes bleeding into ours or a time traveler and a paradox or CERN fucking with the timeline or whatever theories are, are out there the Mandela effect boils down to this it boils down to Luke, I am your father. Quote, no, I am your father. The other one is Oscar Mayer. The other one is, if you build it, he will come. If you build it, they will come. The other one is the Ford symbol. It's got a little squiggly or it doesn't have a squiggly. The other one is Fruit Loops. The other one is Berenstein Bears. The other one is Kit Kat and Staples and Looney Tunes. And the location of us of New Zealand. That's when I first became aware that there was something weird. It freaked me. I, I can't tell you how freaked out I was when what I very you know, I was pretty damn good in geography and was, you know, being a sort of a tested genius in you know, spatial perception and all that. When I discovered that New Zealand was not the shape nor the place that I had always had it, finding it on the map because I liked little kiwi birds and liked finding New Zealand on maps, and it was now somewhere else. Where would you say? Where would you say New Zealand used to be? Into in used to be instead of like a a high heel knee high boot shape. It was an army boot, you know, ankle army boot type shape, and it was uh, one island, not many, and it was situated uh, above Australia and slightly to the west of center of Australia. And when I, when somebody came onto uh, ATS, that's above topsecret.com, and mentioned the fact that he was freaked out because New Zealand is now a different shape and it's more islands and it's down here to the east and slightly south of center. Oh my God. I went, wait a minute. And then I went and did a search, and sure enough, that's where I found it on all the maps. And I'm going, what? And so I went and painted a little picture of what I remembered. And about one-third of the people that responded to that thread, and at that time we were getting thousands of people on the threads, about one-third of them responded saying that what I put up was exactly what they remembered. And I'm thinking if we're talking being bad 
at geography and this is mind you this was back in 2008 okay maybe 2007 it was 2007 or 2008 i can't remember specifically which um you know you know it's hard to know what amy it, it, like i i don't want to knock your mandela effect stuff you know what i mean because you know, Mandela to me, uh, it, it doesn't seem as much of an industry behind it. You know, when you see something being pushed like the Flat Earth was, yes, you don't see the same thing with the Mandela effect. You well, see a lot of freaked out people. Well, you know, my, my $64 million question is, if parallel universes are bleeding into ours, is this the best we can come up with is... Um, um, movie dialogue lines, Oscar Mayer, Fruit Loops, historical uh, events like Berenstein like Bears, mo Bear. mostly things like uh, brands and labels. It all seems very trivial, doesn't it? And there well, are no. It seems unbelievably photos. trivial. Now, Amy did bring up a good point about the New Zealand thing. Again, that could simply be a faulty memory. Well, and, and I then, can't. And then I this can't example. Imagine. I can't imagine that one third of the people would say I nailed it as to what they were taught in school. One third. And, and you know, I, if it was a matter of just being bad at memory, people would be placing New Zealand all the place over the place. There were exactly two camps on that. No, it's still where we, I was taught it was. It looks exactly like I was taught was taught it was. And then there was a, the other camp of no, it was north and slightly west of center of Australia. And which, which, by the way, would put it on the equator in the middle of Southeast Asia. Well, it was it was not in it was in the sea between uh, uh, Australia and Australia. Australia was a little more south than it is now. I'll tell you that much. Okay. So I have, a, I have a memory of Sri Lanka being off the southern tip of India, and I know that that was a, a faulty memory of mine because I hadn't studied the map closely enough and looked at it enough to realize that it's actually off the east coast at the south of India. So when I would think of Sri Lanka, I'd have a thought of an island being off the south tip of India. And that memory became reinforced in my mind to believe that's where Sri Lanka was. And it wasn't until much later that um, I realized where it was. And now I know where it is. I can if your history has been changed, how does the location of a country get moved? And if it's another dimension bleeding into ours, it doesn't make any sense that New Zealand would be in that spot. Well, okay. And it, yeah, it, yeah. And if and if it is, and New Zealand moved as a result of some bleeding of dimensions, how is it that uh, again that doesn't make sense? Well, why 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 only New Zealand? Nothing well, else did. I, nothing else relocate. Is there anybody? I don't. You guys, I got to admit, I I I think I've had Mandela uh, occurrences myself. I, I I have to admit to this. Amy's not alone here. Well, I, one question I want to ask you is, if this is something that is so prevalent within our human being, why is it something that people just started noticing? And don't give me, oh, well, the web just came out. The web was out for a decade or more, and there was nothing about this. More, you know, almost 20 years nothing about this and then suddenly everybody all these people are going hey wait a minute i just noticed that x what okay it, it's a very sudden and very widespread so is there anything in mandela effect that is actually of significance and importance other than brands changing slightly or people's faulty memory about geography or like i have on my screen here the museum has the limousine as a four-seater when we know the limousine was a six-seater. So here's my question. Why is it nothing significant? And the example I'm showing on my screen right now with the, J the John F. Kennedy limousine. Yeah. 
I remember a four-seater. Well, then you've got a terrible memory because there were six people in the car. Now, there's a photo right below. Well, the... I understand that's what it is now. Because, uh, look, if it was changed, how do how is it, like, the, if you look at the top image, this is the museum. They've got a four-seater. Yes. That's I, what I remember. I have, I have absolutely no idea why the museum would do that. When clearly there is an actual photograph, and we still have the Zapruder films that are available. Anybody can go and see that it's a six-seater. Everybody knows it was a damn six-seater, except for those who have faulty memory. If you ask somebody on the street how many were in the car, they won't be able to tell you because their memories are crap. Well, I, I would have said four. And you would have been wrong because there is an actual photograph of all six yeah, people in the car. Karen, if that car, if, if something happened to change things, but it wasn't something that went all over everywhere and changed every aspect of it, conceivably that could happen. I don't know. Okay. At, but I'm and, just saying, I remember that the, the senator got, was in the front seat with the driver. Okay. He got shot. <clears throat> Kennedy got killed, and Jackie right. was next to him. No, 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 no. He was over. So, so at any rate, let me make this point. Let me go to the Fruit Loops. The image of the Fruit Loops. Okay. So you see this image here. Okay. One of these is either Photoshop or. It's an actual screen grab from an actual label that actually changed. One of those two things happened. And if you examine like the two on the bottom, the, the, the blue and the yellow uh, serial for, for in the middle of well, for loops, I just, just, I... just hear me out. Hear me out. If you look mm -hmm. at the, if you look at those two, they're identical except for a slight mm -hmm. color change. So it looks like the one on the left that's F-R-U-I-T might have been photoshopped or... Yes. Or it's an actual screenshot from an actual carton of cereal that never was actually mandela out of existence. Because if it was mandela out of existence, and everybody remembers F-R-U-I-T, but if you go buy Fruit Loops now, it's O-O-T, then that means that there shouldn't even be F-R-U-I-T, which means that this image on the left must be photoshopped. I think what they did was do some photoshopping to demonstrate so that you can ask yourself which which one do you remember okay let's look at a couple of other elements the mm -hmm. kellogg's label is larger and, and offset there's a yeah. there's a leaf in the center screen on the are on the left side and it's not in the place on the right side so it's, these are two different labels look at the two cans beak on the bottom of the image yeah i one I is realized, much larger i realized that they they took two different and if you can images. see where my mouse is right at the tip of the toucan's beak on the left image there's something that says uh, sweetener multi grain I, I guess sweetened multi grain or whatever it says there and that's not in the right side image yeah there are two different images yeah what's the point there well the, the point is that we have two options one that it's photoshopped because if it never was R U I T as on the left, then somebody had to create this image in order to make this meme. Right. Okay. So, all right. So we can agree that those are the options. Now, if I go to the JFK car and it's on the top, it's, it, this is the museum image. Somebody took this picture at the museum. It's a four seater. Yes. And on the bottom, that's an actual picture of the actual car. That's not Photoshop is my point. Well, yeah, I understand so that. So somebody at the museum put a four-seater and they did that on purpose for whatever reason. Maybe they didn't have room in the museum for the, uh, the longer limousine with six seats. Maybe they just didn't have the space. I don't know why. But whatever's in the museum is a mock-up and whatever's on the bottom image is an actual photograph and not Photoshop. So, if the Mandela effect ha actually had an effect on this, why would the people in the museum put a four-seater when we can anybody can go online and see that there are six people in this fucking car? Suppose. What? It, let us suppose that initially there <laughs> it was in timeline. We'll we'll just 
I'll just go with the, their timelines that are converging. Okay. There were four people in the car. Okay, that's possible. And it's also possible that what we know of human memory, that that could be the reason for the Mandela effect. I, I, I'm going to, I, I have to say, I can't believe that because if that was the case, it would be a thing throughout history about how people were always going, yeah, I remember this, this way. And now today it's different. And no, we, people have always remembered things differently. People have always, you could get a group of 30 people who all heard the same talk and come out and say they heard something different. Well, I understand right. that, but do they all say they heard the same different thing? Yeah, well, these, these are being no. reinforced. That these I, memories are being reinforced by these examples I, of Mandela. I, I'm, going to, I'm going to say, though, that people will go through and look at these things without knowing which one they're supposed to mem remember. And when you get lots of people saying, yeah, I remember very specifically X, and they go, nope, it's Y. So this example with the JFK car... The top example in the museum, it appears to be an actual photograph, and probably, I'm going to guess it's not Photoshop, but this is what's a mock-up in a museum. Yeah, in fact, they found a couple of museums. I don't know which <laughs> museums, but several museums had a four-sister in them. Okay, okay, fine. So, how does the, I think this, this particular example of the JFK car is, is absolute bunk. Because so somebody had to do that deliberately. So whoever is putting these four seaters in the museums, they're doing it for a specific reason. And it's not Photoshop. And the example on the bottom is and the example on the bottom is an actual photograph. And you can go and look at the Zapruder film and other films, and there are, without a doubt, six people in the car. So if the Mandela effect had an had an effect on this example. One of these should not exist, and one of these two images should be photograph or Photoshop to in order to show the example. This doesn't make any damn sense. What? We've all seen the Zapruder film, and it's a six-seater. Well, let let me just again. I will say, what if the effects are not affecting every example relative to something? Let us su suppose that there was a four-seater. And this effect came through whatever it was and affected the actual event thing, but w did not affect residuals such as cars sitting in museums. Is that possible? I doubt it. I'm, well, <clears throat> I'm, not... I'm just saying that <laughs> let, if, we, if we suppose that there is the effect. Come on, no, no, come on, Amy. Come on. Come on, Amy. Are in the museum, Mrs. 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 I'm all about probabilities. What's, what's the probability, Amy? I don't know because I don't know what I don't have enough data because I don't even know what is causing this. But I'm of the opinion, based on my data and what explains what I see, is that something's up. Well, uh, my probability falls on the side of faulty human memory. It could be a Mandela effect, but and, it's more likely. Mine doesn't, and I'll tell you why. You you, you said something earlier about uh, not looking at maps close enough. You know, like you, you didn't really realize where Sri Lanka was because you didn't really look really closely. Well, I'm sorry. I looked really closely at New Zealand. Like I said, I was fascinated with the kiwi bird. Every time I go to a globe or a map, that had that area of the, well, the globe always did. Every globe, I when I came in contact with it, I'd find New Zealand because that's where kiwi birds were from. <laughs> now, I, it's not like I didn't really study where it was because I did. Okay, and well, another, considering that's that, another, that's I'm prepared another. to accept that our history has been changed and you're immune to the effects of those changes. Well, I don't know that I'm immune. I'm. I'm seem to be. Uh, I'm not saying that 
what I'm saying is that if it is a matter of, say, timelines converging, we'll have people from one timeline and people from the other timeline, and each will remember their own timeline. And that's why we have people that say, oh, no, it's always been this way. And we have other people going, oh, no, it wasn't It's that way. If, and if New Zealand was where you thought it was, it would be full of Asian, Malaysian people. Well, and it wouldn't have been discovered or circumnavigated, circumnavigated by, by James Cook. James well, Cook, as we learned through school, he came across the, the Southern Ocean and he bumped into New Zealand. He sailed around it twice and then he came and found Tasmania and, and then he sailed up the east coast well, of Australia. That's I how learned, New Zealand what I learned came was to the West. That he came, he came, he went across more north. Than, yeah, no, he did. He than, stopped at Hawaii. And hit, then came, and hit New Zealand first and then went south to Australia. Look, yeah, his, his primary mission was to map the transit of Venus across the sun. And he could only do that properly in the north around Hawaii. So he stopped at Hawaii. But his secondary mission was to find the great southern land, that, which, which uh, people in Europe at the time believed there was a huge continent down at the south. And he bumped into New Zealand. And, but New Zealand had been discovered before. It just nobody knew it was two islands. He was the first person to sail around and map both islands. And then he continued east and he bumped into the, the east coast of Tasmania. And he didn't circumnavigate Tasmania. He then just sailed straight up the coast until he found um, the southern tip of the mainland of Australia. And then he sailed up the east coast, which hadn't been mapped. So. He um, basically was filling in the gaps on a map that had been around for for a few hundred years. And there was an Australia, and there was a New Zealand. He just he just gave us two islands of New Zealand, which is the fact. Uh, but it could be easy to miss if you're sailing past. And no one had bothered to sail up the east coast of Australia and bring the map of it back to Europe at that point in time. That's that's the history that I remember, and well, I remember that clearly because. That was something that was important to me as a, as a student here. The memory I have of Sri Lanka, I had looked at a map and seen where Sri Lanka was. It was later on when I'm thinking, where, where is Sri Lanka? All right, that's right, it's, it's, southern, it's southern India. So, but my mind placed it off the southern tip. I mean, I had looked at the map. I did see quite clearly where it was and later on realized that that is what I saw, but my mind Put it in a different spot. It did the same thing with Formosa. I thought it, Formosa was, uh, sorry, Thailand was way up closer to Japan, and because, you know, I was, I, I had a, a great interest in geography as you did, Amy, and I always wanted to know, and I was always top of the class when it came to identifying and knowing where places on the planet were, because I always wanted to know. I read through our our atlas and. I do it all the time. It was just fun for me. And and yet your memory you know, isn't I, perfect either. No, yeah. People's memories are not perfect. We do create memory after the effect. Well, I, I agree that that's true. However, my point is that that's true for things that we're casual about. You know, you casually bump into something and you just don't really give it a great deal of thought. And... But for things that that were important to us, those are not things that just we misremember. No, that's a mystery that, that you remember New Zealand being basically where it would be is south of the Philippines and right across and like the, I said, uh, east Australia, of Indonesia. Australia was that's big. Australia was a little more south. So there was more room up there and there was New Zealand, <laughs> and you see, and I've always learned that Australia was once connected to New Guinea, when the when the sea levels were lower, um, Tasmania and New Guinea were connected to Australia, and I can't remember anything different. Well, yeah, like I said, there are people, you know, at at, uh, at ATS when I posted that. Two thirds of the people said that that's exactly where New Zealand was all the time. 
where it is. Talking now. statistics. Two thirds of Americans don't know where America is on the map. That's just, we're not talking Americans. ATS is international. We had people from all over the globe. Okay, there were there were people from all over the globe. And Americans aren't are not more stupid than other people, people either. People, yeah, but be that as it may, it was two camps. Okay. I'm, just saying that if you if, if, if it was just a matter of faulty memory people would be putting new zealand literally all over the map okay you guys I, you? Got, I got one for you guys all right all right real, real quick hang, hold tight gandalf hold that thought look at the image i have on the screen right now what color are the seats black it's uh, like maybe blackish or darkish okay here's here's the seats yeah, they're in, white. That's in the motive. museum. Look at the white walls. Can you see where my mouse is right now? Yeah. Can you see right where it's a J different car. Right where JFK has got his arm leaning over, you see that pinstripe? It takes a little bit of a hook right there. Yeah. See this car up here? Doesn't even have that. It's a completely one hundred percent different car. It's not even a mock-up of the same car. Different interior, different white walls. This car doesn't even appear to have pinstripes. Those looks like just shine on the black paint job. There doesn't even appear to be a pinstripe. Hey, this, hey, I just... Uh, everything about this car is different. Yeah, well, while we're on the uh, topic <clears throat> of uh, JFK, um, have you guys... Uh, I was watching uh, the Corbett Report the other day, and apparently... Uh, RFK Jr. is coming out saying that he doesn't believe that Sirhan Sirhan killed his his father. I, I haven't watched that video, but I did see it in my subscription feed. I haven't watched it yet. yet. That's new. That's new to me. Yeah, RFK Jr. is coming out name, yeah, naming naming the killer. Been, yeah, a lot of people have been saying this for years that it wasn't Sirhan Sirhan that killed his father, and um. You know, that's like a big conspiracy. The entire Kennedy, yeah, heard that. the entire Kennedy family. There's so many sketchy things about that of uh, uh, JFK Jr. How he died. Uh, you know, the, the assassination of uh, Robbie Kennedy at that. Uh, I think it was like some. I forget where exactly it was, but I think it was in California. Yeah. Um, and how the guy who killed him claims that he has no memory of killing him. It was like a guy was on some kind of crazy MK Ultra tour of kind. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I let me just say this real quick regarding this this mock up of the JFK car in the museum. Museums, in a lot of cases, are nothing more than tourist attractions. Not always. There are some genuine artifacts and worthy of, of your time and money to go see. But in many, yes. many, many cases, they're simply tourist attractions. They're, like this example of JFK and, and Jackie Onassis, because Jackie, they, they got everything correct. His suit, her, her clothes, you know, all that is, is the same. But nothing about the car is the same. Nothing. Not, not the interior, not the exterior, not the number of the seats, not the white wall tires, the pinstriping, nothing. It's just something for people to fucking that look at. Was taken. No. Yeah, which museum is it in? Yeah, I have no idea. So it could be... Anyway, Gandalf, you said you had a good example. Let's do that real quick, and I want to move okay. on to Mud Flood. Yeah. But I mean, my point still stands. If if our timeline was changed, if an alternate universe is bleeding into ours, first of all, this JFK example that I'm showing you is it's it's probably one of the worst examples ever. And the only other thing of significance it, are you know labels of fucking Fruit Loops and one or two movie lines and movie quotes, and 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 then everything else boils down to faulty memory. So go ahead. Well, well, we shouldn't stay on. Uh... <laughs> There's so many of these topics, you know what I mean? Like, we shouldn't stay on one for too long, but... I know. <clears throat> Nail it down real quick. 
Okay, while we're on this subject, I just want to say quickly, okay, I'm watching, uh, I, like, I don't know about Mandela Effect if it's real or not, but, you know, it's weird, it's really strange. The other day, I'm watching a movie called Prometheus, right? This movie came out in 2012. Yep. And uh, I'm, like, obsessed with this fucking movie. Like, it's one of my top ten movies fucking ever made, okay, Prometheus. Okay. So, I'm watching it. And so they're they're flying down. They're coming to the engineer moon around the planet, and they're flying down to where they say, "Oh, look, uh, God doesn't build in straight lines." So they round the bend and they go to where the engineers, the giants, built this laboratory to concoct all kinds of crazy shit. And it's this big oval. It's like a big dome structure. Now. I watched this movie, uh, I've, I've seen this movie maybe like 20, 30, 40 times. This time I watched this fucking movie and they round the bend and they see the engineer structure, uh, this dome temple stone building. And what do you know? Instead of one dome temple stone structure, which I remember, there's a line of them. There's like 10 of the fucking things. That, that... It's like I can't believe I don't need to see that uh, or ten other dome uh, engineer structures. That's, I have, I'm I'm gonna have to chalk that up as faulty memory. It might be, it might be, but it blew me away, man. Because I'm a movie seen... buff, dude. I'm a big movie buff. To me. There are some movies that I have also watched ten, twenty, thirty, and forty times. I'm not proud of that. <laughs> It, you know, but there are some movies that I'm just in love with and infatuated, and I just will watch it. Like Dune, for instance. I'll watch Dune again and again and again, and I've probably seen that movie 25, 30 times. And I'll watch it again. Uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, one cult classic, one of my favorites. I've seen that movie 30, 40 times. I'll watch I saw it. a big one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the thing is, Gandalf, even though I've seen a movie dozens of times I'll watch a movie again and see stuff that I missed all those other times yes that yes. happens all the damn time that doesn't mean Mandela it doesn't mean alternate universes it doesn't mean CERN is ruining our timeline it means my memory is shit and I can't pick up everything all the time Roof, you're probably right alright next topic <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm probably right that's good enough <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's draw a line under it there and move on. All right. Okay, so this particular video, I don't. I might. I'm sorry. I might want to might wanna try to play some of this video where he goes, starts to get into the mud flood here. Is the great mud flood is not so subtle, and I want to take a <laughs> closer dive into the mud flood and the evidence for it. And then we're going to link that back to the Mandela effect. Okay. So I just played a tiny portion. What I would like to know from my audience, can you hear the audio from the video? Somebody in the chat, let me know that you heard that little portion that I just played. Well, I can't hear oh, Charles Koss is in my too. chat. Charles Koss. Charles, you get a wrench. Oh, Charles Koss. I miss you, buddy. I don't think Charles... Has Charles Koss ever been in my chat? I think he was once before, at least. All right, cool. Charles, thank you. He said he heard it. Okay, so you can hear the audio. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to play a little bit of this video. And I'm going to go... Unfortunately, I'm going to be stopping a lot. I've got... I started watching this, Amy. This is the video you sent me. Yes. From Observation Deck. And I just want yes. to show that real quick to the audience. This is Observation Deck produced this video. And I created like two pages, almost two pages worth of notes in I started it six I started at six minutes twenty-four, which is right about almost where I am. Um, and I stopped at ten minutes. So in four minutes, between six minutes and ten minutes. I've got almost two pages worth of notes, and I stopped. At that point, I stopped, and I was like, you know what? We're just going to do this shit live. 
because this is utter nonsense. So Amy um, and Daniel and Gandalf, you guys are going to have to do whatever you can to try to hear the audio. Um, maybe go to my channel and unmute my video and uh, there will be feedback if you if you speak while it's unmuted or whatever there may be feedback if you actually what you might want to do is mute your mic so that the audio coming through your computer doesn't pick up by from your microphone and then create the feedback audio so if you want to hear this I, I recommend that you uh, listen go ahead so we can get the closed captions if the person's speaking clearly uh, uh, closed caption. YouTube yes. Yeah. Okay. Close cap. Close caption is yeah. on, <clears throat> and I will go full screen, which will make the closed caption a little easier to read for you guys. <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you can't hear it, you're just going to have to read the closed caption, and I may repeat some of the things that he has to say. So we'll go here. Um, mansions at the um, the Gilded Age deception. Okay. Um, so he says he's going to link all this. And then I didn't even make it all the way through the video. I, I mean, I got 10 minutes in with two pages of the notes, and I said, okay, I'm done. So he's somehow going to link this back to the Mandela, and I doubt we're even going to get that far because there's 20 minutes to go, and I'll, I will be stopping a lot to correct almost everything this guy has to say in the next several minutes. So I'll play a couple minutes, and we'll go from there. So what is the Great Mud Flood? So for those of you who have not heard about this, and I'm not surprised if you haven't, You'll understand why in a second. So let me just start by asking the question, would it be possible to hide a complete history, such a recent complete history? All right, I'm going to stop right here already. <clears throat> there is something wrong with this image, and I haven't quite figured it out, but what I detect is very wrong. If you see where my mouse is, center screen, <clears throat> right where my mouse is, there's a window. Now you can see where the supposed ground level has been dug away. So this is like basement level, right where my mouse is going back and forth. What we see here are windows. I can fucking promise you there's something wrong with this. Because if this was underground completely, if, this re if they really did have to dig this out completely, those windows would not sustain the pressure of the ground. If well, the, I'd have to agree with you on that. If the ground level came across where my mouse is going right here, those windows would not fucking be there. Now, it is possible, and, and the closer I look, it is possible. See where my mouse is now, up and down? Those bricks appear to be broken. Maybe they had this temporarily walled off, and those walls have been broken down and broken away, because these do look like they're broken brick right here. Maybe. That would be the only way. In fact... In fact, some houses are built with basement windows that you can get out. There's a little cubby that's that's sort of rounded and sometimes squared off. So it's like walled off by brick or block. And there is a window that you can open the window like in a fire. All right. It's a, it's a fire escape. Right. So this could have been where it was walled off partially. And the windows were still intact because it is a basement level. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. And these old brick walls that were holding back the dirt have been removed because they're getting ready to fix the foundation. It looks Actually, there's rebars. It looks like they're getting ready to pour a foundation for a building next door is what they're doing. That's why they're digging down. So they've exposed the basement level here. And these little fire escape cubbies, New York has tons of these types of like windows, basement windows. Some houses have them. Right. So there's that. There's no way that the dirt went up to the window. No fucking way. At the very no, bare, bare minimum, these were fire escapes for basement people. If In case there was a fire and you couldn't get out, you could open the window or break the window and climb up out through this fire escape and get out. Yep. Okay, moving on. Be kept as a complete secret. What if I told you we had an entirely different... Oh, and by the way, that's a big question among these mud flood people. They'll say, why are there windows below ground? Uh, well, to let light in the fucking basement. That's why. Moving on. I'm going to 
back this up and let this guy speak so the audience can hear him. Yeah, I have an answer to that too. Go ahead. <coughs> yeah, go ahead. Uh, Daniel, I don't hear you at all, so... Okay, so I was talking to an engineer who was digging out the street in London. <coughs> and I... Oh, no. Oh, your audio is coming in and out, buddy. Daniel, do you want to try to leave the chat? And then, he just did. And he, then, just, yeah. he just left. All right, so he'll be back in a minute. Either either he left or he dropped out. Maybe internet his bandwidth. Hopefully he'll be back in a second. Yeah, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Anyway, um, I'm going to move I'm on. I'm looking forward to what is his. I know, I know, right, right, is, right when he, he had an explanation. <laughs> there he is. Can't hear. Okay, me. can you hear me? Oh, yes. now we can hear you. Much yes. better. Okay, I just restarted. Okay, so I was in London and I, and I was seeing this. And there was windows and, and rooms been below street level. And there were people working on the street. And I went up and spoke to one and he said, go and talk to this guy. And it was he was the engineer, the foreman of the site. And I said, what's going on? Why are these buildings below the street? And he said, well, there's a couple of reasons. One is that we've built the streets up over time. Another is that the people who own these buildings are actually turning their basements into extra rooms. And sometimes they will dig down deeper just to create more room because they can't go out, uh -huh. they can't go up, so they go down. <laughs> and to me, that was a very reasonable explanation. He said, underneath this road here, that's above the street, is the power lines, there's stormwater, there's, it, it's full of stuff. Mm -hmm. So right. when we built the roads, we had to build it over the top of all this other stuff and we had to add all this stuff to it. And that to me was a very reasonable explanation. Bravo. Thank you. I'm glad you're here for that. Excellent, excellent little gem. Thank you. And absolutely, that's completely reasonable. And yes, that is true. People do dig out their basements to create more room. Absolutely, that happens all the time. It happens in homes. It happens in garages. And it happens especially in tight areas like this where you don't have any room to expand outward and you got buildings and streets beside you. And the only place to go is down. Yeah, and then they build the street. They have to build the street up to all fit right. all the infrastructure underneath the road. So the um, the mud flood people will come back and they're going to say right here, this big red arrow that says windows and doors. Why are there windows and doors underground? Again, I would suggest that these might be fire escapes if they are windows. Um that would be a, a pretty reasonable explanation. And just like Daniel said, if this was a mud flood, let's keep in mind, let's just hypo let's, let's hypothesize for a moment. Let's say a mud flood did come along. This upper, the, the red arrow on the top, it says street level. Let's say a mud flood did come along. How convenient that the mud flood stopped right at the bottom of that level, not halfway up. Just right there, right there at the at that perfect level, just below all of these doors and windows on the on the ground level. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad you noticed that. What that's a, a marvelous coincidence. Thank you, mud flood, for stopping right where you needed to, so we could only you know anyway. Um, and what Daniel said was that there are there are storm drains, there are power lines, there are other things below this level. Right. Subways. There are other things down there. There's the underground is full of stuff. Years ago, and prior to that era, yeah, and you can see the foundations of that building as well, which they do dig deep to make the foundations. You damn right they do. You're gonna build a big building. You don't just put it on the topsoil. It's gonna sink and settle and crash and fall down. And this, that's another thing. Too, this is the is foundation. Seen. You can clearly see that this is the foundation of the building right here where my mouse is below the red arrow on the left. Yeah, we're there, we're there saying it's the real level. <laughs> no, it's not the real level. That is called foundation. Yeah, the buildings do sink. 
Buildings also sink. Over time, a building will sink. Yeah. And it will, it will sink by, you know, maybe a couple of centimeters a decade, but they sink. If they're not built on bedrock, <laughs> they will go down. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Got a little, little phlegm down in the bottom of my throat. Sorry. Moving on. ...which has been almost eradicated from the history books, maps and references, and even erased from a collective consciousness. Welcome to the mud flood. Well, according to all the evidence, they've managed in less than four generations to remove almost all references to whatever the pre-civilization was prior to the mud flood. So I don't know why he showed this particular pic picture. This isn't a very old picture. Um, it doesn't, I'm not, this is, looks like Russia. Let me turn the closed caption off for a second. It doesn't have a time stamp on this image. It's just an old picture from Russia somewhere. <clears throat> um, this is a market square, and it says so right there, the market square in, in Volgograd. It's, it's a market square. What does this prove? This, this picture proves nothing. Why is he showing this? It proves that there was a rapid expansion of population at that time. The city hadn't to whatever the up. pre civilization was prior to the mud flood. Now I say pre civilization because we're not just talking about covering up a global event. Because although it's a lot of this is a pretty good picture here, Daniel. What do you think of this one here? The picture on the right shows the full-sized open doorway. The picture on the left, this is Photoshop. <gasps> oh my God, this is Photoshop. But that's not... This is How Photoshop. Do How do you tell? Okay, can you see my mouse on the left picture? But it's not a doorway. Hang on, hang on. Oh, see, yeah. See these two I people standing right. here? Yep. Look at the two people on the left, on the right side. Exactly the same. Yes, they are. This is fucking Photoshop. I agree. And most of them are. If you look closely, you'll find that most of them are Photoshop. <laughs> oh, God. This is, this is fucking Photoshop. People don't look. They see what they want to see. And what's more likely, Photoshop or, or a global mud flood? Sure, there's been floods and, and mud has built up in cities and they've had to clean it out and cities expand faster than the population. The population expands faster than the city is growing. So you end up in areas that are muddy and not yet paved. And it just looks like a whole heap of mud's come in, but it's not the case. And then you've got this example, and this is totally Photoshop. I can tell it's Photoshop because it's the identical photo. Yeah, those people did not stand there as that building sank over a hundred years. Yeah, it's it's absolutely identical photo. You can look at the fence, this uh, a wrought my, iron. My clue are those things over on the right-hand side of the picture. Uh, that's some writing. Just taking a level some, out. Those are some te text textual writing over there. Oh, okay. So I can not tell. If you, if, if you look at this wrought iron fence, this wrought iron fence is absolutely identical, and you can see the markers as they as they hit the window corners. They're absolutely <laughs> identical. This is 100% fucking Photoshop. Busted. Busted. Yeah, and the, yes. the people showing the, the the photo in the video will show it for a couple of seconds, and you won't have time to see that. Right. You won't and have time confirmed. to really look at the details. But the true dead so giveaway, the true dead giveaway, are the two people that my mouse is on. The two people in the image right there. These are identical, absolutely fucking identical yes. people. Yes, De they are. That's a dead giveaway. Busted. So who's doing this? Who, who is who is photoshopping these videos? these photos and then making videos saying here's the proof that there was a mud flood. Somebody who is manufacturing something to for us to argue about. Clearly somebody with an agenda. Clearly. Yes. Yes. Who but, they are. Ken Sabe. Photoshop busted. So yep. hey, just in case observation deck gets wind of this live stream. Photo, I, buddy, you need to pull this fucking video. This is junk. This is fucking bullshit. This is garbage. This is Photoshop. You are lying to people. Yeah, Observation Deck is probably AstroTurf, and it's just feeding the narrative. 
moving on I'm gonna actually I'm gonna back it up and just let this guy okay there's that picture a go, global go here. event because all those a, global, uh, a, a lot of these event. pictures of he said it's a global event the mud flood was a global event um no the geological record does not show that there was a global mud flood I'm sorry that's no, just no the historical record nothing nothing shows it <clears throat> no no, and, and we'll get to it in a minute, but this idea that there's these orphan trains because they needed children to dig out the cities and this mud flood came along and killed everybody except what? It, it killed all the adults but not the children? Yeah, that's, that's always been my, my question. Wait a minute. No, there were lots of children because in the, in the early 1800s, a... A volcano erupted, and it gave us a couple of summer, a couple of years without a summer, and there was uh, famine all over Europe, and many people did die, and there were lots of orphans because there was a lot of poverty, and um, there was no abortion or birth control that was effective, and there were lots and lots of children that needed somewhere to go, and orf there were orphanages everywhere. And they, yes, they spread them out to places where that were developing, that people could actually adopt these children, like the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. Okay, can you see my screen right now? <coughs> yes. What am I showing? 400,000 children in the U.S. foster care system. Yep. That's now. That's right now, just the United States. Yeah. Talk about orphans. Where they're, where they're... You want to talk about orphans? Orphans are not fucking new. Why do we have 400,000 orphans, children, in foster care system? Well, a lot of them have been taken away from their natural parent, parents That's these right. days. Okay. And I'm just going to say. <laughs> okay. Sure. But in, in 1850, being an orphan or, or being a discarded child was very common because there were so many people who could not afford to keep their children. And we, but we all know that um, there are people out there who will sell their children. Not everyone loves their kids. Um, unfortunately, that's correct. That is, that is sadly true, yes. And when poverty, when, when you add poverty to that mix, that number of people who don't care for their children it increases dramatically, unfortunately. Yep. Okay, so let's move on. This this photo has been absolutely thoroughly debunked. Fucking Photoshop. Yeah. In Russia, Most there's clear evidence in Australia, the Americas. Okay, so here we have a sidewalk that runs right up to what looks like little windows. Those are basement windows. Haven't you ever been in a fucking basement that had windows near the ceiling to let in some damn light in the basement? This yes. proves nothing. This picture proves absolutely nothing. I agree. That that one's a really poor choice. You know, uh, when they built the stream, they did it above the basement of the building. It's quite simple. Or, or, or not so much when they built the street. The street was already there. The ground level was already there. They had to dig down to create a foundation. And then they created a basement as part of the foundation. And then they created little windows to let some light in the basement. And then they built a building on top. This yep. is, and you common. Can clearly see this is that, common construction. That is the foundation. That, that is the foundation of the building. The first floor is that floor above it. Yeah, but they, another thing these people talk about too is the size of the doors. And they're convinced that, that we overran a, a, um, a society of giants. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I'm prepared to admit that there were, you know, civilizations and that there was um, infrastructure in places before Europeans got there. But the whole idea that there was this great Europe. war in the, in the mid-19th century that overrun this Tartarian civilization... And we took all their buildings, and the and the way we did it was to flood them all with mud, is is an absurdity, on the face of it. I I agree with that too. What year do they say that the mud flood took place? Eighteen forty-seven. Uh, 
yeah, yeah. In, that, in that neighborhood, mid 1800s. That's laughable on its face. I, I even I even wrote it down. I've got it in my notes here, um, because at um, let me see at eight minutes. Um, let me see where I am. Oh crap! I'm only four minutes forty seconds into this. At 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 he he says at eight minutes and thirty four, and I will play it just to let you know. I will play this. He said he 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 pegs the mud flood at eighteen forty seven. Um, he does. At six minutes and twenty-four seconds, so two minutes ahead of that, um, he shows flyers. And, oh, I can't wait to get to this. You guys are gonna laugh. He shows these flyers. You know what? Let me just skip ahead. I think we're doing pretty well on these buildings. The construction yeah, of these I, buildings. Yeah, I think, I think we we've got something. Yeah, skip ahead. And you know these images like this. Oh, and the orphan trains. We're gonna try to cover that. See, look. In the top right corner, it's just a picture of children lined up. That doesn't prove shit to me. Over here, there's a train with orphans. Yes, there were orphan trains. They moved orphans around because orphans, you know, the missions became overrun with orphans. Big deal. It doesn't prove that these orphans were shipped off to be slave labor. And at 6 minutes and 24, let me go there. Watch this. This is fucking hilarious. Here, there's the orphan, and close up of the orphan train. Here we go. This batch of flyers. Look at this. I stopped and I actually, I, I read, to the best of my ability, I read, the, the one on the right is really, really hard to read. These flyers actually disprove this guy's theory, okay? Look at the one on the right, it says February 25th, 1910. Okay? And then, let me, mm -hmm. let me yeah, go which here, is, hang on. What, 40 years Eight minutes and 34 seconds, he says, he puts it at, and I'll come back to this. Watch, watch, watch. You can just read the read the uh, the, the subtitles or listen, but I'm going to play this just for a couple of seconds where he puts it at 1847. And it seems to coincide exactly, which is why I've got the date 1847. Boom, there it is, which is why I've got the date 1847. So there he's got the date at 1847. 624 here are the flyers so if the mud flood happened in 1847 and here we have a flyer that's ho needs wanted homes for children in 19 fucking 10 why is he showing me this can you do 37 math? years before that's 63 years Yeah, that's that's a bit. Yeah. That's sixty-three that's fucking years later. Why do we have orphans in nineteen ten, from the mud flood in eighteen forty-seven? How much <laughs> fucking sense does that make? Well, they, these were special orphans. They didn't grow <laughs> up. They just stayed <laughs> children. This is. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to use this word because I know it gets under some people's skin. This is fucking retarded. Yes, I agree. This other flyer over here on the left, actually, if you just go through any of these, all children received under the care of this association are special, are of special promise in intelligence and health and are in age from one month to 12 years and are sent free to those receiving them on 90 days trial unless a special contract is otherwise made. Homes are wanted for the following children. Eight boys, ages 10, 6, and 4. Brothers, all fine, healthy, good looks, uh, of, good parent, uh, of good parent age. Uh, brothers, 6 and 4 years. English parents, blondes, very promising. Two-year-old blonde, fine-looking, blah, blah, blah. So they're promoting these kids. Uh, here, here we got one that has... Um, had, had to have his foot straightened, so we got one kid with a club foot or something. He walks okay now, six years old, dark hair, da-da-da-da-da. Ten babies, boys and girls, from one month to three months. Uh, one boy baby has fine head and face, black eyes, ba da ba da ba da ba da ba da Let me get rid of the closed caption so I can read this. Um, Reverend MBV Van Arsdale. Yes, it's a reverend, because in especially back then, these were missions. They were run by the church that mostly helped, yeah. housed the orphans. 
So this is uh, that, that, that. And by the way, this flyer has no date on it. So we don't know when exactly this flyer is advertising children. Why are you using this flyer? There's no date. This is this is it's just a flyer. OK, um, here's the other one. Are you uh, planning or are you planning or enjoying a holiday? Please do not forget our large family of 4,400 children, including 300 babies and toddlers, 400 cripples. Their uh, needs do not cease during the holidays. So it's just another flyer trying to get people. This is Waif and Stray Society, Kensington, London, Southeast 11. Um, it's just another flyer trying to get people to be aware that, you know, orphans need homes. And this other one over here is... Uh, it's the same thing. They, they, look, these flyers are people to, to get children homes. And these mud flood people like this guy here on Observation Deck is suggesting that these orphan trains, these orphans, these flyers for orphans were being, you know, squandered off as slave labor to dig the mud flood out. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we have to be... We have to be cognizant of what was happening at the time, which was the, basically the industrial revolution and and millions of people moving into cities and the mortality rate for women giving birth to children. And you'd end up with a lot of kids with no mums and dad would go off, join the army and he'd take the kids to an orphanage. And this wasn't uncommon. I think I think that's true. Where did our our host There's guide? always always been orphans. Yes. And then and back then, considering what was going on, there were a lot, and, and it makes sense that there were. And and these are societies that are just trying to find homes for kids who have no parents. So again, we go on. Let me turn the closed caption back on so you can see what this guy has to say. We're in Russia. Uh, uh, their children were shipped out to Australia and all over the world. Well, that may be true, well, and particularly Australia, and in particularly back in the uh, 18, early eighteen hundreds to the mid eighteen hundreds. Before, before Australia, second, Australia was okay. a was an empty spit of land that we were literally trying desperately to populate. That's why we sent prisoners there, and there were flyers for people to go there and homestead and set up camp. Anything they could do to get people to populate Australia, there was a huge effort yeah. to populate Australia. So it's no wonder it's no wonder that orphans were sent to Australia. Look, before before the Second World War, Australia had a policy. It was um, only to take a Western Europeans. So we only took British, Scottish, Irish, and Welsh, and um, some Germans. But no Slavs, it wasn't until after the war that we started to allow Greeks and Italians. So I do not see hordes of, of Russian children being allowed to come to this country. It wasn't until 1966 that we um, repealed the white Australia policy where no one was allowed to, to immigrate to Australia who wasn't fair skinned. Up until 1966, everyone was Caucasian, except for the local indigenous population. That was it. And if, and if there were Chinese people here, they were only allowed to stay for as long as they were allowed to um, do gold mining and certain construction. But they, then they had to leave. And having a child here was, was, was no, no boon for them because they had to take that kid home with them. It was an extremely racist policy, but it wanted, it was basically designed to fill the country full of British people. Um, the reason I was out of incognito a moment ago, uh, Nancy is informing me there's a news flash. Uh, the latest on the, uh, sorry, this is going to be a, an interruption on our topic. The latest on the U.S. response to uh, attacks on the Saudi oil industry, 
The Pentagon says the U.S. will deploy additional troops and military equipment to Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates to beef up security as President Donald Trump ha has, at least for now, decided against any immediate military strike on Iran in response to the attack on the Saudi oil industry. <sighs> so, there's that. Breaking news. Sorry for the interruption. We, I now return you to your, to your regularly scheduled program. I want to read something that Charles brought up in the chat. Yeah, Charles is in Australia. What's Charles got to say? I can't see it. Au contraire. In 19th century was zero white Australia policy. We had Jews, Russians, Germans, etc., etc., heaps of Chinese. Aussie slang is based on Yiddish, Kaba, Shikarid, etc. Woohoo. <laughs> he always says woohoo. Yes, he does. You're breaking uh, up. Daniel. Da Daniel, Daniel, please repeat if you can. You couldn't hear any of that. You're underwater. Nope. 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 No. Sorry. Hold that. Th hold that thought. You want to try again? You want to leave and come back real quick? Yeah, yeah your, your signal's terrible. Why don't you jump out and jump back in and see if that helps. In the meantime, I want to point out that out of all the mud flood people who keep saying things like that these children were sent off to as slave labor to dig out the mud flood, to dig out these cities in the mud flood, while we have pictures of old cities... Pictures of old cities where the streets are empty. Pictures of cities are under construction like the ones I showed a few minutes ago. But you know what we don't have? We don't have a single fucking picture of any child or group of children with shovels and, and wheelbarrows digging out mud flood. Not True. one fucking picture. Not one. Not, not a single one. <clears throat> I'm, I know Daniel is working on getting back in here. I'll, kind of wanted him to hear that as well i might repeat that yeah there. can you hear me yes yeah, yes i'm just trying to work out what is sucking up all my cpu but i did hear you say that there is not one picture of one child digging out mud <laughs> good i'm glad you heard that um this guy here he puts uh, on the screen under this picture and we don't know where when this picture was taken in fact this picture almost looks like a composite this actually if you look very closely at these people it could be a real picture but it kind of looks like a composite like this this woman does she looks out of place um i don't know let's just say it's a real picture of a bunch of kids in russia it could be a school it could be a gathering for a festival. They're all decked out in their their garb. Some of them are sort of dressed up. This doesn't look like normal everyday clothing for half of these kids. A couple of them on the bottom look like Russian Boy Scouts. So this could be a, a gathering for a festival. Um, look, they got pom-poms in their hand. What are they holding? What is it, a stick with flowers? What are they holding? Like pom-poms? A couple of flags? This is not orphans being shipped out to be fucking sold as slaves as he has written on the screen here there's no, no it's just a picture of some kids there's no evidence at all that these kids were sold as slaves he just says so daniel you still with us how's your how's your audio i can hear you okay you but you sound better okay i'm gonna move on to i'm, I'm not even gonna play the audio again we have another picture of a bunch of kids at a train station uh this proves nothing they could be orphans this could be a, a, a class outing it could be a fucking field trip we don't know it's just a picture of kids yeah i was i was gonna say that looks like a bunch of kids being taken to a museum for a class outing but you know here's this actually, this picture actually lends credence to what Daniel was saying a moment ago about the long exposure uh, images. Because if you look at this kid on the bottom right corner of the screen, he's moving. Yeah. His, look at how his face is stretched and blurry because he moved. Yeah. So you can clearly see that this was a long exposure image. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, they tell him, stand still. Right. Stand absolutely still. Right. And he which, failed. Which telling, a, telling a group of children to stand still is like ordering the tide to go out. <laughs> yes. Says, That's very true. <laughs> observation deck, he writes on the screen, these are not wartime refugees. They are kids who have their names changed. No evidence of that. Right. Just, just the assertion. And so... No trace of them prevailed. Well, that's probably not true. You just don't know how to do your fucking research. You could probably figure out where this picture came from, and you could probably figure out who these kids are if you really knew how to dig, dig, dig. And that takes work, and that takes effort, and these people pushing these bogus conspiracies, they're not interested in effort. They're not interested in following up or doing any real work. Again, we have a picture of kids on a train. So what? So they moved kids around. They moved orphans around. So what? Does this does this picture prove that these kids were sold into slavery? Does this picture prove these kids want to, to go dig mud flood? Look, these are mostly little girls on the bottom here. How much fucking work are these little girls going to do digging out mud flood? The people on top, these are not children. Those are adults. Yeah. These people over here on the left, these these are all adults. All of them. There's a group of children right here. There's maybe 15, 20 maybe children on the bottom center. Yep. It proves nothing. There's a couple kids over here on the right, little girls. But all these on the left and all everybody standing on top, those are all adults. This picture proves nothing. Riders on the orphan train. Okay, so there's some kids taking pictures in front of a train. Maybe this was a school outing. Maybe the school took a field trip down to the train station. Hey, kids, you want to go see the trains? Because back then, trains were all the rage. Maybe they took the day off from school and they went on a school outing. They had their picture taken in front of the fucking train. In fact, this is the end of the road for this particular train car. Because as you can see, there are no train tracks on the right-hand side where my mouse is, on the far right of the screen. True. True. It looks like it's not even on tracks. Yeah, well, I was going to say. If, if I look to the far left, if I look to the far left over here, it looks like those could be maybe tracks on the back side of this train. Yeah, but so, I think there are tracks that are going. See on the right hand side, you can see some tracks, but off going off. That's what that looks like. This one looks like a car that's been removed from the tracks. It does. Yeah. Um, all of the kids in the front are holding pieces of paper. The kids sitting down in the front, except for the one in the center. Uh, the little girl on the right, she's got some paper in her hand. Yep. Uh, this little kid here in the back row or second row back, this kid. Uh, it looks like most of these kids are holding pieces of paper. I don't. Is that their schoolwork? Are they taking notes on their school outing? What is this? We don't fucking know. Yeah. If, if they're orphans, why are they all ha- carrying? pieces of paper look like notebook paper yeah and why are they all wearing hats yeah they're all wearing it looks like those uh 18 mid 18 early 19th century or early 20th century um like election year you know when the election comes around those cheap ass straw hats yeah those cheap hats you get it yeah every everyone has a hat on and I'm going to tell you, they aren't going to sit there and worry about whether orphans have hats on them. Here we have another picture of children. Again, Mrs. Slugworth, or whatever the hell her name is, this woman, she moved. The cameraman said, stay still, and she moved. Her So her foot's blurry. You can tell she's moving during the image. This is a long exposure yep. picture. Yep. So again, that lends to what Daniel said. Um these kids, and it looks like 1913. We well, yeah. Well, it looks yeah up here on top. Yeah, uh, yeah. 11, 15, 19, 13, Yes. So uh, now we're all the way to nineteen thirteen. <laughs> um, orphans at what is that? Moas show. Mo Moas M L A S E Moes show. New York. Or is that an NV? That's not Nevada. No, that's it's, a, it's, an orphanage. it's an orphanage on an outing. 
actually it says uh, M O A S show. Are they going to a show? Did they take the yeah. kid? Did they take the kids out to see a show, or did they take the kids out to be shown to prospective uh, parents Here. who might adopt them? Mm. And if who they're knows? and if they're being and if they're being like the flyers who needed parents for orphans, that's not kids going to be slaves, because parents, individual people, will show up and adopt these kids, and and then what? They become parents, not fucking yep. slave owners to dig mud flood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything about this whole story, nothing makes sense. And then when you get in, and I know I'm belatling the point here with these orphans, but. Here, merchant farmers, friends generally, um, children without homes. You know, this, this is a flyer for, you know, merchants and farmers. Okay, so again, this is not to dig out mud flood. These are orphans who need homes and merchants and farmers who, you know, could could adopt a child and maybe use a little bit of help on the on, on at the store or help on the farm. That's not digging mud flood. That's not slave labor. No. Uh, but that's consistent. That's consistent with the time. Sure is. Here. Well, we gotta... and if you look at it, uh, okay, uh, oh well. I was just going to say it's asking the the um, merchants and farmers and other friendlies to help uh, promote a and something. They're not at, saying come get our kids. They're just saying promote this, maybe get us some money so we can keep our orphanage running sort of thing. All right, look at this picture. How many orphanages can afford to dress all the kids in exactly the same way? Not many. This almost looks like like a proto um, Boy Scout troop because they all have the same hats. They're all wearing the same jackets. They all have boots. They're all and they're all dressed exactly the same. This almost looks like, again, it could have been a boarding school photograph. It could yeah, have been that, a, that's probably more. He says these kids were not orphans; they were stolen on orders of the state. Yeah, where's the? There's no evidence. It's just he makes assertion upon assertion upon assertion upon assertion. It's fucking ridiculous. Yep, I, I uh, agree with you on this. Is. Using photoshopped images to support these assertions. Yeah, I, I think we we can move past the orphans now. We've got okay. that pretty well worked. That when we're looking at these pictures, we don't know. Okay. Ain't nothing. This image I do want to focus on for a minute. This is staged. Okay, I have a feeling that this yeah. is staged. <laughs> The reason I think it's staged is, be, can you see my mouse, the kid on the right? Yeah. It's been wiped off. Can, can you tell. see the sharp line? His his jaw is clean. His ear is clean. His neck is clean. And yeah. there's a sharp line of dirt right there. Someone smeared dirt on this kid for the for the photo. Yes. Yes. That, that's what it looks like to me. It looks like this was staged. This picture was staged. This kid here on the on the left, he's got a a, a nice uh, waistcoat and a pocket watch. A pocket yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, nah, nah. I don't know what that is, but that ain't nothing. <laughs> so, am I to believe that these kids are working the mines because their faces are all black and dirty? Are they working the mines? Is this kid wearing his waistcoat and his pocket watch to work in the mine? Or yeah. sweep a look, chimney. Yeah, or yeah, or, or sweep a chimney. Look at how cleanly he, this kid on the left. Look how cleanly he's dressed. His waistcoat yeah. is not dirty. Mm -hmm. It's not even fucking wrinkled. But he's got some smudge, smutz, schmutz. There's a nice Yiddish word for you, schmutz. <laughs> I think I think this photo was. I, I think this photo was staged. Yeah, I I even 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 for the time it was staged. All right, back to this picture, back to this picture. Um, I've got notes for all these timestamps. I'm going to spare you guys, otherwise we're going to be here all damn night. <laughs> well, we still have about 23 minutes left. 
Yeah, oh. I'd like to get to the to the moon. Um, at at nine minutes and eight seconds, the guy debunks himself. He said uh, a global effort to repopulate as late as the 1870s. Moving into. Come on. Are you playing? Play. 19th uh, to the 1900s. Moving to the, the 1900s. The question is, if you are having to employ kids to do all the hard manual work, where are all the, all the, where are all the work, adults? Where are all the, where? all the adults? Well, that's exactly right. Where are the adults? Because if the mud flood killed all the adults, how did the kids survive? Yeah, really. Who went and picked them all up and gathered them together? Here's a picture that is not even a photograph. It's a drawing. How is this evidence of anything? <laughs> it's a woodcut. Here's another one. It's not even a photograph. It's a drawing. It's almost as if something had wiped out most of the adult population, as you can see quite... This is so retarded. It's almost as if something had wiped out most of the adult population. This is a drawing. It's an artistic rendition. It's a drawing. This is a woodcut. Unbelievable. Clearly, yeah, I'm looking at all those adults yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, Amy. <laughs> yeah, here's another one. It's just a fucking art, art, an artist. It's a picture. It's not oh, a look, photograph. I see one child. <laughs> uh, and on and on and on this goes. I mean, I could, I could literally spend all night. Where here? Here's one. Where are all the people? Um, I don't know. In church. I mean, this is early in the morning. You can see yeah, by you can see by the the shadows. You can yeah. tell by the shadows that the sun is off to the left, kind of low. Otherwise, yep. The shadow of this horse and buggy right here wouldn't be what it is. You can actually see a few people meandering around if you look closely near the buildings on the sidewalk. They're not in the middle of the damn street. They're up here near the buildings doing their business. Um, what does this prove? Yeah, and any vehicle moving across the bridge won't be exposed. Oh, and by the way... Only the, only the vehicle standing still. And, and by the way, do you, do you guys recognize what city this is? Can you tell by this picture what city this is? So Washington? London? Oh, it's Paris. There you go. It's Paris. No, it's Paris. Paris. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that's Notre Dame right there. It's Notre Dame. Uh huh. Yeah. Ah, yes. Yeah, so it is. Now that I look. Yep. Except that's see? not what it looks like today. It must be Mandela. It doesn't look like that anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm just being funny. And how convenient that the mud flood went right up to the bottom of the door on all these buildings. Yeah. Or, or maybe the slave labor children dug that all out. Um, I do. I do want to get on to what Daniel wants to cover about the moon. I do want to get on to that. But, okay. But before we do, before we leave mud flood, we cannot leave out this idea of this Tatarian civilization having free energy. Because that's part of this mud flood narrative. Yes. This kind of freaking bullshit. I'm going to try to not to swear too much. But this idea that they had Tesla technology and that these spires on these buildings, like here, look look in the side of the circles, these little deco, art deco, uh, like right here. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, this is a freaking shop, and that's a cabinet, and he's got them circled in red. <laughs> What the fuck are you trying to tell me that this this cabinet is picking up free energy and you have to have these little Art Deco things on top? To that it, it is so yeah, that that aspect definitely never made sense to me. And that's not a photo. No, this is not a photo. Well, actually, it could be a photo. It could be a screen grab from a commercial. It's a. It looks like an auto. No, no, the car. one. The one before with with this the cabinets. Oh yeah, that that's not, not a photo. Yeah, that's not a photo. That's an that's a woodcut. 
Yeah. And then he says, um, this guy goes into, I mean, I could spend all damn night. He goes into these star cities. That's not a star city. That's called a fort. And those stars, star fort, yeah. that's a fort. Yes. And they're built very specifically because they're defensible. They're e much yeah. more easily defended. Than you can yes. put more people on the wall. That Well, look, the people, if you stood here on the tip of this point, you can shoot an arrow and defend this wall, and the guy on this point can defend your wall. So yep. if somebody wants to run up and as a siege and try to attack your wall, you, yeah, you've got this star pattern creates the literally the only shape where it's defendable. You can defend the outside of the wall from the other walls. From yes. inside the fort, you can defend the outside of the wall. This is the only pattern that will allow you to do this. And that's why we have these forts. And the castle in the middle where the lord or, or whoever lived. These are defensible positions. It has nothing to do with energy and it's not a star city. Okay, this is a big one. And yeah, there's a may you call it a small city inside. But these are forts. These are defensive positions. That's all they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All cities were. All cities had walls. Um, this narrative of the mud flood, star-shaped city. Uh, no, that's the fucking Statue of Liberty. It's not a star-shaped city. I mean, it's just... This particular video from Observation Deck is one of the most absurd things I've ever seen in my life. And speaking of mud flood, uh, where's all these rocks coming from? Yeah, aren't they covered, covered up with mud? <laughs> if, they have excavated part of Moscow because they are renovating the city. And you can see they're laying foundations for new buildings. If you listen to Max Egan talk about the mud flood, Max Egan actually suggested, and I don't have time tonight. I don't want to bore you guys to tears. I would like to move past this. But I got to get through this. I don't know if, how much you guys have seen of this mud flood stuff where they show like fireplaces. Uh, the oh, yeah. I, what are they called? The irons that hold logs, uh, the decorative mm -hmm. irons that hold hold the fireplace logs. And there, here we go, right there. Yeah, that's just part of the free energy. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm trying to recall the name for those, and for some reason, I used to know very well, but it's just gone from my head. Electricity back out of the air, so you had Wi-Fi electricity. The fireplaces, fireplaces, as the, you can see there, as you can of, see there, old, were not actually used to burn coals, but they were that that back metal plate heated up because on lots of these, they were not used to burn coals. No, actually, that particular fireplace with those things didn't burn coals. They burned logs. That's what those things do. They hold the logs in place. The great. And by the way, the people in promoting this mud flood bullshit, they're saying that they had like Tesla technology. They were pulling energy out of the air. Um, what the fuck were they using that energy for? Well, Ruth, yeah, explain, they had, they had, Ruth, explain the star cities. <laughs> to, to what? Explain the star cities. Um, I did. Weren't you here? Oh, no, I've been cutting in and out, man. Bad internet connection. Okay, Gandalf, if you don't know already, the star cities are designed this way very specifically because it's a defensive structure. If you see my mouse, look in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I know, I know the reason. I'm just saying, man, this is fucking ridiculous. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, thank you for not making me do that again. So... My question now is, if if these guys and back in the 1800s, before the mud flood of 1847 that nobody knows about, if they were pulling energy out of the air like Tesla, 
I would like to know what the fuck were they using that energy for? Yeah, what, good question. What were they doing with it? And where are the wire structure? Where where the stru- the the uh, infrastructure to carry that electricity from here to there? And what the hell were they doing with it? Because they didn't have lights. They didn't even have fucking light bulbs. I, I don't know. When was a light bulb invented? Pardon me. I, I my Thomas Edison history. I think it was the early, early 1900s. I think the late 1800s. It might have been late 1800s, but it was around the turn yeah. of that century. Yeah, sen- right around the turn of the century. Okay. Yes. So the light bulb was invented turn of the century. Um, so we didn't have light bulbs in 1847 in the mud flood. What the fuck were they using this energy for? We didn't to power their their uh, hover bikes. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <clears throat> their air, their uh, anti gravity electrogravitic crafts, right? There's, I have no idea. <laughs> <clears throat> You know, I just think that this entire Tartaria thing is just an example of how stupid the average person is. That's not even conspiracy theorists who are already retarded, but just people in general. Yeah, it's a tangent, and it could be interesting, but it's not. It's crap. I I I I, I bristle that he's bringing. Te- Tesla into this because now Tesla is another story. Truth, truth nuggets, Amy. So you 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 drop little morsels of truth, and then you just fucking build shit, build shit upon it. Yeah. So it's like it, there's gonna be little timbits where people go, "Oh yeah, I I heard something about Nikola Tesla." Yeah. Yeah, um, and all this stuff is before Tesla. Yes. Tesla didn't come along for quite a while. Okay. I, I am. Do you, do you guys want to take a break? I need to use the restroom or, or do you want to just move on? Because uh, I want to get to the moon. Daniel wants to get to the moon. Evan Wade in the chat wants us to get to the moon. So I want to get to the moon. All right, Daniel, do you want to bring us up to speed on the conversation you and I had? And then when I get back from the restroom, I'll pull up the pictures and we can show what you and I were talking about regarding the latitude and and the change in the in the the angle of the photos that you took of the moon from from Australia when you traveled to Europe. Yes. All right. Go yes, ahead. And, I will, go ahead and bring everybody fill, in. Everyone. Fill everybody in on the conversation we had. I'll be back in a minute and then I'll share those pictures. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So I discovered that the moon appears differently in the northern hemisphere because somebody looked at my my display picture that I had before this one, which was a picture of the moon that I was taking as it was rising. And somebody in the United States said, yes, the moon looks different down there than it does up here. And that to me, I wondered why, why would the moon look different? And I thought, well, this, this may be evidence that the earth isn't a globe, but then Um, I hadn't actually paid any attention. I'd been in the Northern Hemisphere before, but I hadn't looked at the moon or taken photos of it. But earlier this year, I went to Europe and I took some pictures of the super super moon as it was rising. It wasn't quite full, but yeah. So I'm pointing my camera directly towards the moon as it's rising. And I compared it to photos I'd taken here that were, I was doing the same thing, the full moon as it's rising, and I take a photo. So what Rufus and I discovered was that the actual, the turn, the moon turns to the exact same um, degrees as the difference between where I am here and where I was in Europe taking that picture. So what, what initially started out as something I couldn't explain suddenly made complete sense that yes, if I was to travel 70 degrees around the surface of the earth, the moon would appear to turn at 70 degrees. So, and that's what it did. So when uh, Rufus comes back and shows the photos, you can imagine that I'm standing in the Southern hemisphere looking at the moon and I take a picture of it as it rises. 
and then I go to Paris and I do the same thing. And it turns out that the moon has turned almost precisely the amount of degrees that I had traveled um, around the globe of the Earth. So for me, that is solid proof that whatever we, whatever we think the shape of the planet is, from Earth, it appears to be a globe. When we look at the moon and the stars and everything that happens in the heavens suggests that the, the Earth is actually a globe. And until I get into a rocket and I go into space and I look at it, um, I won't be able to say that with absolute certainty, but the arguments that are presented that the Earth is flat are all basically nonsense. And I haven't heard anybody discuss the, the rotation in the moon at different latitudes. But for me, personally, any doubt that I had that I was living on a globe evaporated when we discovered that the moon rotated in the exact same direction it would um, if I was to go uh, and the exact same amount of the precision of the amount of degrees that the moon rotated from my relative position and perspective um, was identical to the amount of degrees that I had supposedly traveled uh, around the earth if it was indeed a globe. So, and here's co here coming the pictures. Which one, now, which one do we want to look at this. here? Well, we want um, the one that's not quite full. So that was, that was one that I took in Paris as it was rising. So, uh, the blue. What, so what we're looking at, these two photos here are both taken from Australia, from where I am at, what did I say? I think it's 28 degrees south. And then there's another photo a bit further down, I think, that one there. I know it's not quite full, but you can see quite clearly that that, that image has actually turned. Uh, yeah, let's, so let's focus. 77 degrees. Let's focus on this crater near top dead center, just, just, off, to the, just off to the right of the top yeah. dead center. Focus on, the, on that crater. Okay, and then look at, and that one was taken where, Daniel? That was taken in the 20th arrondissement of Paris. So, so right. 40, 48 degrees north. 48 degrees north. And you were in Paris when you took that picture. And yeah, the one 48 I'm degrees north of and, the equator. And, and this one here was taken where? This is where I live, which is 28 degrees south of the equator. Okay. So almost. So that crater. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, that's like 74 degrees right yeah 48 yeah. 28 74 degrees uh 76 degrees excuse me yeah so, the same amount of degrees that i that i had had displaced <laughs> myself from south to north the uh the relative appearance of the moon actually turned in that same uh-huh Direction. Well, yep. It, it, this, so here's the crater. My mouse is hovering over it now, if, if everybody can see. It's pointing toward the upper left. And then I'll go to the other picture again. Watch where that crater moves to. That's, yeah, I noticed that initially. Yes. And that's... It, we could. I could probably... Uh, it might... I don't have... I don't have the, the software handy and I wouldn't be good at it if I did have it but we could probably you know create of um, you know drop these in into a, like a Photoshop or, or a photo uh, program and then draw some some like uh, angular lines yeah, and, I, and, I could do it. and literally measure the actual difference between these two pictures yeah, well, we can we can see that it's approximately the same amount of degrees that I had traveled around the world. It sure looks like 75, 76 degrees. It's almost 90 degrees. It's not quite 90 degrees, but the difference and, and from... keep in mind... Sorry, keep in mind that I'm taking a picture with a camera, so I'm trying to keep the camera level, but precision is not there. And just bear that little bit of error into account, 
that is the difference in the appearance of the moon. So anyone can do this. They can take a photo of the moon as it's rising, where they are, and then they can go to the north or southern he hemisphere, and they can take into account the amount of degrees that we supposedly had covered in that distance. In, in your travel. And yep. Then, yep, and then it will line up with the... Um, the actual the, angle of the change of, the, of the, the image of the moon, absolutely. Yeah, so the moon hasn't changed, you have. Because the moon's out there at uh, 250,000 miles or whatever, and so there you go so that's what they say and that would be consistent with what we're seeing right here so to me um that that's, the, that's my doubts that i had on the on the planet being a globe and there being curvature all evaporated when we put that together and we discovered that that turn in degrees was um Equal to the latitude yeah, equal change. Equal to the amount of... Yes, there you are. Yeah, so the angular so, difference between this image and this image are equal to the latitude change from where you are now to where you went in Europe. Yeah, and that, and that makes <laughs> sense. Um, from your perspective on the globe being at a different angle. So I'd like to see that one debunked. I'd like to see how a flat earther can explain why that happens. But all of us who live in the first world, most of us can at some point take a trip to the opposite hemisphere. And if we all did it and compared it to the pictures that we take of the moon as it's rising, keeping the camera level, then we're all going to see this. And how do we explain the Earth being flat? That's the case. And, and I can't. And I hear other arguments like, why do we see the same stars um, yeah, at different times of the year? So we, we go outside and we see the same stars that we see in Christmas what well, is that we do in July. And that is a, an outright lie. I go outside every night. I don't smoke cigarettes inside. So I'll go outside at night to have a cigarette and I look at the sky or I just like to go out and look at the sky anyway. I love moonlight and starlight. And I, can, I have seen the procession over the years of the stars going a little bit further each day and the Milky Way actually change in angle. And I haven't done a reference to it, but I would say that would probably also indicate the same. So our relative position in traveling around the sun changes the way that the uh, stars look to us. And what we see is the Milky Way, that, that stream that, that um, what looks like a, a ribbon moving across the sky. Oh, it, it, it's a, the uh, Egyptians called it a river, uh, but that actually turns itself. And there are points where I can't see it. So, um, okay, it, just in the afternoon, it'll be setting. But then six months later, it will be uh, rising in the afternoon. So, so but they, when they tell you that we're seeing the same stars all year round, it's, it's just an outright lie. And right. they ex expect you not to actually spend six months looking at the stars every night <laughs> to confirm whether or not they're telling you the truth. I, I, but, I, mean, I agree. <laughs> Amy, and so you've only got my word for this too that that I took that picture <laughs> as it was rising, but I kept the camera level. But like I said, everyone do it, and you don't even have to go to the opposite hemisphere. You just need to have you need to go at least ten or twenty degrees north or south of your current position, and take a picture of the moon rising and it's full, or at least like this, so you can see how it looks and then compare it to the picture you took at home and you'll see that it has rotated the amount of degrees that you travel north or south that's right which is completely You're... consistent to how it would look on a globe from the, from the globe that's right but the, the argument will be that this is EGI or the moon's closer 
or some crap like that. Or you're that you're, a NASA, no you're, you're a NASA and, shill, Daniel. We know it. <laughs> that's it. NASA. Well, yeah, and that. that, that you turn the argument, then you, yeah, I'm. You turned your camera. That's all you had to do was angle your camera, take a picture. Super easy to do. I'm not buying it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so or, or if you really care, if you're one of those people who really care, and you, and you want to demonstrate that the Earth is flat, you need to do this for yourself, and none of them will, because they know that the Earth is flat. So, and that this, what we're saying now is complete and utter bullshit. And we're making it up just to try and disprove and debunk that their theory that the earth is, is flat. And that's not the case. I was on the, I was on the fence, but my observations from earth indicate to me that indeed the earth is a globe. So as long that makes more sense. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, you do have this image that I'm showing right now where we can see through the moon, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but you've got the other image that I sent you. <laughs> Go back a bit and show the image of the crescent moon where the Earth is lighting up the rest of the moon. And that, that will be clear too. You do remember that picture I sent you? Um, I should. I've seen this. I've seen people saying this. Look, um, we can't see. It's back further. It's one of the first pictures there. There you are. So I've heard people saying that the moon is just it's the light itself. But I've always seen. We have always seen this here. If when the sky is clear, and the sun has just set, and the moon is following it, we will. We can see those craters and they are where they're supposed to be and we can the moon does appear to be lit by the earth so the glow of the earth is like which is four times the it's, size of it's the moon backlighting the back side of the moon here so some of the reflection off of the earth is hitting the dark side or well, the, no that's not the dark side the dark that's the side that always the, I, faces. I, I, yeah that's I, was, the I, I was about to correct myself the dark portion the dark area, you can actually clearly see the outline of the moon, and it's dark, but you can see it. It's just, it's not, it's, <laughs> here, here's even, that's even a better one right there. You can see and very, the blue one. And... There you go. You can actually see the craters. You can see that that is a full moon that hasn't been lit. Yep. Something else is lighting that up. And it's, and the reason it's coming through clearer as blue is in the blue filter is because the earth is quite blue apparently from the moon now the moon the, the earth would appear from the moon four times larger than what the moon appears to us so it would cast a lot of light out there on the moon so that's another thing it it de debunks the the um you know, the orthodox religious people saying that, that you know, the moon is see-through and that people have seen stars where the moon's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. And what, they didn't see a star. They, they, they may saw, have seen a UFO, but yeah. they, weren't, they were not seeing through the moon. No. No, they're not. What they're seeing is that our atmosphere, because yep. you have to look through 20 miles, our atmosphere is like 20 miles thick. If there's too much light in the sky now to see to see that you're and looking through 20 miles of atmosphere at a portion of the moon that's not being illuminated and sending light back to us so the dominant color the dominant thing you're going to see is the atmosphere itself yeah and this is a waxing moon that is rising as the sun is still setting so the sun is still in the in the west and the moon's rising in the east at the same time. And that as, as the moon waxes to full, uh, that rising of the moon gets later and later by an hour each, each day. And eventually you get to the point where the sun sets and the moon rises at the same time. And that's when we have a full moon. But then as the moon wanes back to a crescent, it, it ends up setting just after the moon, which is that other photo I showed you where the bottom of the moon is completely lit up, but the top of it isn't. 
as the, the moon is following the sun down, uh, down below the horizon. So you can see, and the sun is, is below it, the sun has just set, but just off to the south. So the moon is following the sun down, but it's a little bit north of where the, the sun went down. So, and that's why that crescent is off to that side. And, and because the atmosphere was so clear in winter here, it, the atmosphere, the, the, the stars can actually give you light. You can see by the light of the stars. And I live in an area where there I is can learn to understand you much better if I can get familiar with the way kilometers from a decent city. So I can see the night sky very clearly. And I've been seeing this my whole life. So when I heard them say that we can see through the moon when it's crescent, I'm like, no, I need to take a photo of the moon, of the new moon as it sets after the sun. And we can, cause we can actually see the craters on it. Mm -hmm. And there they are. <laughs> and, I, and as far as the other photos go, I mean, I can't, I don't have the, the original images are not, they're time stamped, but they're not location. But I can show you, if you need to see it, I can show you my passport that shows you I was in Paris or, or France at least. So, yeah, I was going to um, say, at you, you that were, time, I was going to say, you must have been in Paris because that's the same, that round crater is the same as this crater right there it's in the same position no no i our, took that our, picture see the sun's, the moon is setting i took that picture from here just last last month the crescent but it's setting so the moon goes over us and doesn't turn at all so what we see coming up it actually then goes down first um, so, when it sets okay so this image i'm looking and at what we're seeing is the bottom of the moon so this image I'm looking at right now, you took in Australia. Yeah? Yeah. This is the picture you took in, yep. Par in Paris. That one from right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So when that, I, would, that would make sense. So when I look at this image and I try to identify, you said yeah, that it's you, upside down now. you took this picture. But look at the bottom. You can see the mouth at the bottom. So it's upside down because it's setting now. So the part that is at the top when it, it's rising is now at the bottom when it's setting. Yeah. Because the moon does not turn as it goes overhead. Yes. That makes sense. The spatial perception genius says absolutely that's how it works. So it's, I mean, it's a extremely interesting topic and it's, and, and to debate that the earth is flat or a sphere may entertain you but from what we can tell on earth it certainly appears to be a sphere and if you travel you will see these things too and if you pay attention to the stars every night for a year you will see that them proceed in a way that's consistent with us orbiting a sun so we, we do see different stars at different times of year. And as we progress around the sun, that, pro that progression does a, a 360 degree turn and comes back to where, where it began. So for every night or at least once a week for a year, go out and look at the stars, um, find a constellation, okay. identify it, and then go out <laughs> at the same time the next week. And you will see it's moved a little bit. It's actually, um, it's it's advanced. Okay. Yes. Every it advances slowly. Yep. Okay. I know. Then, uh, Sirius Sirius is known to be unseen for seventy days. Yeah. Okay. Because I, you, you're I, in the wrong place. Okay. I can see what you're saying. That this moon is completely upside down. If I draw a picture yep. around this little batch of uh, cratering or spotting on the moon. I can see that that's this portion right here where my mouse is, and it's completely upside down. Yes. So, yep. So this is, uh, you know, um, an, an upside down version of, of the image that where my mouse is. Gotcha. Makes sense now. I don't have the metadata. And I transfer those photos to you on Skype. I don't know if the metadata went with them. I don't know if it's the original photo. I definitely know the original photos. And you can see the timestamps on them. And I can show you my passport. 
I showed you that when I took this picture, I was in Paris, and I was not considering the actual turn of the moon at the time. I was rising up <laughs> over the building, and I just decided to zoom in and get a big one. You're, you're breaking up, one and Daniel. You're breaking up again. Yeah, you are okay. breaking up again, and it's a quarter after 10. So do we want to wrap this up, or do we have anything else do we want to cover specifically? Uh, Gandalf or anybody? Hey, King9, what's up, bro? Oh, well, well uh, Josh is still going live, right? Um, probably. I, I expect he probably will be. Okay, well, yeah, uh, three hours is good, man. Yeah, I mean, unless you guys have anything particular or important that you want to cover. Um, I, I put out a new vid today or yesterday, I I'll guess. I'll have to check it out, Amy. I wish people would check my vids out every time I do. <laughs> well, okay, before I leave, everybody has my screen still, right? I'm, I'm over yeah. here. I'm over here on Object, Observation Dick's uh, channel. Everybody see this? Yeah. Yeah. Can you see this? Good man. <laughs> well, I think I may be doing the same then. Bye bye, brah. I don't think I was ever subscribed in the first place. Thank <laughs> you know, if you're going to put out fucking trash like that, and it is literally just trash, that video was the worst. And, and Max Egan is. Uh, I'm, he's one of the biggest pushers of this mud flood and Max Egan, I, I got, I, I'm sorry, but I just, I have, I used to have respect for him until he got into this mud flood Tartaria nonsense. And it is literally nonsense from start to finish. There is nothing about it that makes any sense. None of it. It's assertion upon assertion backed up by Photoshop fucking pictures. And we showed that earlier for anybody who's just tuning in. We completely, uh, literally on the spot, just debunked one of those images uh, by showing that it was Photoshop. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of proud of myself. I, I looked closely enough and I said, holy fuck, those are the two same, those images of the people standing there showing the, the difference between you know, the levels of the ground, that was, without doubt, without question, that was complete and utter Photoshop bullshit. So, I, Max, I Max is just looking for material, just looking for new material to keep people watching and listening to what he has to say. He's and also speculating. Up to the he's, also, he's also, yes, he is. He's Very also well. speculating in order to support the nonsense. Because I've literally heard yeah. him. In fact, I didn't get time tonight. But um, for anybody who gives a shit, if you if you want to see something fun, go over to uh, Bob the Science Guy channel. He's not the most entertaining fellow, but he's he's definitely worth having a look at. He takes a piss on Max Egan, and he's got like a four part series on Max Egan so far. Look at look at Bob the Science Guy's most recent video on Max Egan. Um, Max Egan said that the mud flood, that the mud came from an, a worldwide earthquake. And the mud came up from underground through the process of liquefaction. And, I mean, let's be honest. If there was a worldwide mud flood in 1847 then it would take one hell of a long time for the forests and the grasses and the farmlands to recover in fact if it was a worldwide mud flood as max egan promotes covering all the farmland with mud would literally kill everyone we would all starve to death there, that's right, and there would be oral histories. And there, there'd be written would history. There'd be photographic that. history. There'd be oral yeah. and written and and photographic. Because in 1847, they were taking pictures, so we would have all of that evidence. Nobody has any pictures of any fucking city buried in mud. All you have are pictures of construction sites. That's all you fucking have. Oh, and Photoshop pictures. That's what you have. You have Photoshop. You have assertion yeah. upon assertion. 
backed up by Photoshop, backed up by more assertions. So now, I'm not defending. I'm not actually defending Max in this because I think he's out of line, and I've tried to tell him several times that w what he's doing is he's not looking at this thing objectively, and he's not accepting the contradictions as you know potential disproof. He, he's just running with something that he believes himself to be true, and why he's doing that. We can only speculate, but I know he's not getting a paycheck to say this stuff, except through his subscribers who, who, um, because he comes on YouTube every week and he has something to say that's interesting. And when he's running out of interesting stuff to say, he goes back to this fake history. And cause he knows that people are willing to listen to it and it keeps his audience up keeps his pay it keeps his um, patreon um, giving him money and it keeps people inviting him to speak I mean he's constantly traveling to speak and he loves to do this so I mean yeah he's compromised himself basically <laughs> well he makes the rest of the people in the world online who are genuine truth seekers or conspiracy minded people he makes us look like retards and there's a lot of things he does. He does a lot of stuff like that. I Cons totally agree with you. Conspiracy analysts. Let's get that right. <laughs> so, um, is Josh live right now, Gandalf? Yes, yes, he is. Okay, Lanny from Canada. He want, He says, I don't think you have the theory right, Rufus. He want, Lanny wants to argue. I think, I think Lanny's just taking a piss, or he wants to have fun and argue. I don't know how serious Lanny is, but you know what, Lanny? You and I. What, one of these days, Lanny, maybe on Josh's stream when he opens up his stream, if you want to go on there and argue, but I don't want to ruin Josh's stream with me and you arguing over this nonsense. But Lanny, if you want to argue with me, then I'll bring you on my show or, or we can do a separate stream or whatever. But it, I don't have time right now. We're going to close this down. And um, so I want to give everybody final thoughts and um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next Friday. Oh, and by the way, next Friday... Um, Allison Twist is going to come on and uh, try her best to uh, explain what Reiki is and try her best to explain that there's actually something to it while I am going to play complete and utter devil's advocate and I'm going to challenge her at every turn. So, uh, so final thoughts, everyone. Go, go with you, Amy, and Amy Gandalf, and then we'll give Daniel final thoughts and then we'll close it out. My final thoughts are love always and check out my vids. You know, don't listen to what anyone here has to say or the facts, you know, make your own reality. Yeah, well said. Don't follow a narrative. Just investigate it yourself and look at it ob objectively with an open mind, but not so open that your brains fall out. And with that, my final thoughts are the same as they always are. Be good to each other and pick up your fucking trash. And I will see you guys on the flip side. I'm out. You guys on in the in the hangout, if you want to stay still for a minute, I'm just gonna kill the OBS and we can chat on the hangout briefly and then I'm gonna go over to Josh's channel. So uh thanks everybody for being here. Um and we'll see you next time.